a cold grey day in Birmingham. As you walk your way through the streets of this city of growth, this city of industry, this city of engineering, this city of culture, commerce and community. So the place begins to awaken. A haze lifts off the canals. The drizzle starts to clear, the clouds part, and it heats up in Arena Birmingham, for it is time to take flight. It is time to touch the sky. It is time to soar and to be a world champion. It is time to discover the best team in the world today. This is the last day of competition at the FIG Trampoline Gymnastics World Championships. Four finals to bring you in trampoline gymnastics before the team all around final concludes our coverage. Truly, we will discover the greatest trampoline team in the world in all around trampoline gymnastics. Every discipline, every category, who will it be? It was the host nation, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland last year. Can they, as the hosts, as the top qualifiers, defend and retain their title? The very warmest of welcomes to you indeed. It is a great pleasure to have your company wherever in the world you join us from. Whoever you're supporting, however long you've been enjoying the wonderful sport of trampoline gymnastics. My name's Ollie Hogben and it is my great pleasure and privilege to have alongside me a man who knows this atmosphere so well, a man who's been to the top of his sport, who stood on a world championship podium. Pete Cracknell is with me. Pete, it's already been a history making world championships. This is a huge last day. It really is. This is it. So these gymnasts have been working, a lot of them their whole lives, tw up to 20 years, some of them, to put everything together now. You only get one shot. Every routine we're seeing today, you get one chance. There is no opportunity to do it again. If you make a mistake, that's it. It is absolutely unforgiving and uncompromising, this sport. The only thing that is forgiving are the athletes themselves, the kindness and camaraderie that they show to each other is a lesson to us all. The women's synchronised trampoline final is our first order of business in Birmingham. We have athletes coming up today who have made their breakthrough at these championships. We're going to start off this women's synchronised final with two teenagers who are appearing at the World Championships at senior level for the very first time. Later on, in the men's synchronised final, we're going to see a gentleman who's at his 11th World Championships and has made his first ever final. We have the full range today. The contenders in the women's synchronised trampoline competition, the Czech Republic, will get us underway. Two youngsters making their World Championship debuts. We will finish with the host nation, with Great Britain. And they had a very promising campaign in qualification. They will be last to go. Will they take the world title? So team A on the count of three, you're gonna make as much noise as you can. Scream, shout, put the children down, make it loud. One, two, three, go! Dave Payne, one of the uh, arena presenters here, geeing the crowd up wonderfully. Hikaru Mori there being supported in the crowd. Gamba, it says on the right, uh, give it your all, do your best. She always does her very best. Wow, that's, that's very impressive. Useful every now and then being able to read Japanese, very, very occasionally. Winning synchronized trampoline final. Here are the, the finalists in the women's synchronized Neto competition. Aneta Rudova and Mihaila Yuritskova will get us underway. USA, what a Nicole moment for them. And Sarah They'll be followed by two very experienced athletes. Representing Canada, Rachel Tam and Kalina Sohn. And they will be followed by two very experienced athletes. 
representing Australia, Imogen Florian and Karina Haggerty. Great partnership from Australia will be next. Representing China, Zhang Kui and Pinky Lin. Chu Zheng and Lin Chanqi from the People's Republic of China. Japan, Megu Yuyama and Hikaru Mori. And then we have the reigning world champions, Uyama Megu and Mori Hikaru. Representing France, Laura Paris and Cleo Bruce. Definite contenders, the French partnership of Learning Laura and Paris Lee. and Cleo Bruce. Make some noise for Great Britain, Izzy Sumpers and Brandy Page. Izzy Songhurst and Bryony Page will be the last to go, and they had a fabulous this qualification is your campaign. Massive experience in those two. Well, frankly, Pete, this looks like an absolute showpiece synchronised final to get us underway. It is. So, obviously, with Japan being the current world champions, they qualified 0.02, I can do the maths, below Great Britain. <laughs> so that's so how tight. close it is. Um, they went with slightly different difficulty and different synchro. So they actually had different approaches. Great Britain went with slightly higher difficulty and Japan had higher... Um, HD. So you've got that sort of real variety of um, ways of scoring being used. And we're going to look at all of the mechanics of that as we go through the HD. The horizontal displacement is a very important part of trampoline gymnastics. At the heart of a synchronized routine, naturally, is that ability to work together, to read each other, to respond. Because in individual trampoline gymnastics, if something goes slightly wrong, then you can adjust it yourself. If one of you gets out of time, out of sequence slightly in the synchronized routine, you have to have an almost telepathic understanding, don't you, Pete? It's virtually impossible. It is so hard to make adjustments. We have seen it done. So a gymnast, if they're making a mistake, they might shout something like sub to substitution, and the other gymnast can try and substitute. But as you say, it's almost telepathic because if this is element six and you're doing a very specific skill, the other gymnast has got to know to downgrade it in the exact same way. If the skills ever vary, that's it, the routine is terminated. Ready. What you want to be and hearing and seeing one. is that single connection. Two. If you start to hear a tap tap sound, as though you've got somebody drumming on a table, then you know the synchronization has deteriorated in the routine. Yeah, synchronicity is worth a lot. So it's a score out of 20. A typical score is around 45 to 50. So synchronicity being out of 20 plays, plays, a, plays a big part in this. Last year, for example, the team with the highest synchro won. Now let's just have a look at the apparatus itself. That X marks the spot in the center, which is the ideal area for the gymnasts to be striking. You can see, I'm sure, that the trampoline has been divided up into sections and depending on where you land away from that central area you are liable to incur horizontal displacement deductions one tenth for being right next to in the center that uh, 
central X. But as you start to then move left, right, up and down, you get 0.2 of horizontal displacement deductions. If you're right into those four corners, that's 0.3 of horizontal displacement deductions. But more to the point, as we've talked about throughout these championships, Pete, is that it becomes impossible to read the trampoline for it to behave the way you want it if you're in the corners. Yeah, so the cross is where the trampoline gives you the most uh, vertical force. It gives you the most control. It can be done. Gymnasts at this level could probably do the routine from any core of the corner of the trampoline, but that's not to say they want to. <laughs> so that has covered horizontal displacement. We've looked at synchronization. Now let's look at execution and the mechanics of performing your routines well. Pete, what is it that the code of points really mandates for good execution? So we've got the um, sort of the toe points and a lot of things which you would look at for sort of the elegance, I would say. A critical factor will be in a shape. So if a gymnast is in a pike shape or a tuck shape, so that's where they pull their knees in tight or they're folded in half, they'll be looking at how deep that shape is. Um, line out, so when they kick out, ideally they want to kick out before what we say 12 o'clock. So kick out at vertical and then hold that line. So that's keeping a straight body from the upright position all the way down to the, um, sorry, upside down to the upright position. We'll look at all of this as we go through the routines in detail. You may have just seen there the gymnast snapping the uh, arms down by the sides. That, generally speaking, is the clear indication that the routine is ready to begin. And the gymnasts can abort the start of their routine as long as they do it before they have actually begun. Once they've started, that's it. There is no opportunity to reset. It is quite intimidating. So yesterday in the qualifications, for example, it was actually Brian and Izzy here. Uh, because it's best of two, they did really well in their first routine. And then for the second routine, they did in jumps, is what they're doing here, and they jumped and it just wasn't going to plan. And in the end, uh, fortunately, because it's best of two and they already had a good score, they ended up electing to stop. I said earlier they had a, a wonderful qualification campaign. Let me rephrase, they had 50% of a wonderful qualification campaign. As you say, their first routine was the finest. But one wonders if it plays on the mind what happened with the second. It really can do. It's such a psychological sport. There's so much pressure. And when you're jumping in synchro, you've, you've only really got them out of the corner of your eye. It's, it's a really bizarre skill trying to... Because you, you can't move your head. That would be... Well, you could move your head, but don't. Uh, it, but yes, it's, it's very difficult. We begin the women's synchronised trampoline final in Birmingham. And what a great moment this is for Aneta Khrunova and Mihaila Yuritskova of the Czech Republic. It is Kudova who is in the foreground. She's 18, she's from Liberec in the far north of the Czech Republic. Yuritskova is a year younger and she is from Valaške Mezirzici in the east of the beautiful riverside town. Their senior world championship debuts and they've made it to the final. We wish them good fortune. but I think for a first ever senior world championship final that is a great start they were the first up first competitors of the entire day and they've done it they have that is so difficult to put together you've got so much going on you're, you're worrying or trying not to worry about what the other gymnast is doing you're trying to just do your own routine and make just minor adjustments but it's tricky so they've elected with, to use some single somersaults. So often we'll be looking at broadly double somersaults, but a single somersault, though it gets lower difficulty, does give you very high execution and an opportunity to maintain height and control. They have played this routine really sensibly, really carefully. And they will always remember, and look at the looks on their faces as they conclude that, they will always remember that moment. First World Championships, made the final, got through it cleanly. Job well done. And their score is 
1.49. That is the best that they've done in the entire championships. What a good start. Nicole Arsinger and Sarah Webster from the United States of America. They were the third best in qualification. They were part of the US team that won the all-around silver medal last year. They've had very good World Cup form this year, these two, including winning the Palm Beach title at home in Florida. So they're certainly contenders for a place on the podium. Didn't look like the most secure of beginnings. Well, they've done really well there. Nicole Arsinger and Sarah Webster. I just wondered about the arm that, uh, at the start there and whether they were actually anticipating going, but they got through it beautifully. It did look a little bit tense, but they kept it together. So that first skill, so there's a full twist in the first part of the skill, and that's very stressful to get right, because if you drop your arms, you can travel forwards, which is what we could just see there. And here, that's a Rudy out, so that's a one and a half twist out of the skill. Just a huge fan of that skill, done in perfect synchronicity. There we go. That is such nice form, isn't it? That's the actual skill that made me fall in love with trampolini over 20 years ago. <laughs> and watching them do it isn't going to make you fall out of love with it because that's a lovely demonstration. Well done to Nicole Arsinger and Sarah Webster. They're up from qualification 49.49. So they go into the gold medal position with six to go. Kalina Sohn and Rachel Tam from Canada. Tam, part of the team that won the gold medal at the Pan American Championships. Sixth best in qualification. Routine problems there with not actually coming back and dismounting securely on the apparatus itself. It will carry a small loss of marks. Now, this is a really strong start here. So they go into the ball back pipe, they actually kick out at different times. That's okay within the judging as long as they kick out by 12 o'clock. So by up, so down, they're okay. The hips just slip there, slightly incorrect with the leg movement. And this is just such a huge skill. You've got so much to wrap in a short period of time. Double twisting, double back, and call that a full in, full out. It was cool, they weren't even sure you were going to do it. I think that was pretty great, actually. 46.9 is midway between their two qualification performances. They go into the silver medal position. This is the fourth of the eight pairs. Karina Haggerty and Imogen Florian from Australia, 22 and 23. Haggerty, the slightly older. And with the eighth best performers in qualification. A 
was a very uncomfortable moment right at the end of that routine. They did extremely well, these two, to rescue as much of the synchronisation as they could because at the start it quite quickly went away, Pete. That really showed resilience because when a gymnast is travelling, the other gymnast has to stay strong and potentially intentionally lose height so that you maintain synchronicity, and that can be really tricky. So there, the gymnast knows they're now out, but they've actually corrected it there. So there's a lot of strength to be able to do that. They had something of a mixed bag of scores in qualification, 46.74, but also an 18.67 for their second routine. The best is what counts. Unfortunately, here we got something closer to that 46.74, but not the tidiest ending. No. You might notice there that gymnasts are twisting in different directions. That's totally okay. Gymnasts aren't expected to twist the same way. That would lose half our pairings otherwise. 41.41. United States of America leading at the halfway stage of the competition. Nicole Arsinger and Sarah Webster. We go to Lin Qianqi and Chu Zheng from the People's Republic of China. And Chu is making her world championship debut, very limited international experience. Lin at her second world championship. They were the fifth best in qualification. A very good display from the People's Republic of China. They were so well positioned for the start of that routine. Absolutely centrally located on the trampoline bed. Can they make an improvement to that to qualification score? The best of 47.66. Knowing you're going into a triple, there's a lot more jeopardy. So that's the first triple we've seen today. Pushing up high, knowing you've got that tight shape and you've got to go over your head three times means you really need to get it right. You can't be busy in a triple somersault worrying about what the other gymnast is doing. You just have to commit to that hugely difficult skill that no one else has done today and just hope, well, just assume, trust, sorry, that your uh, pair partner is going to do exactly the same thing. And that's where what you've said, Pete, comes into play about how you go out there to do what you do in training. Yeah, you just have to recreate it. Remember, though, a lot of these gymnasts might not train at the same club. I know, for example, we're very lucky, oh, well, other, other gymnasts do train at the same club, but some might be on the other side of the country. And these two are from quite different parts of China, Jiangsu and Fujian province, respectively. 48.95. They go into the silver medal position. So still the United States of America leading. Now then, we have the champions from last time, Uyama Megu and Mori Hikaru. Both competing at their sixth world championships and they are an outstanding partnership. It mattered so much to them to win the title last year. They did it as well in 2018, so they've had real longevity. From a horizontal displacement point of view, it's probably not the sharpest we've ever seen them. 
from a difficulty standpoint, Pete, it's a very, very busy routine, isn't it? It is. No single somersaults. Also starting with a triple somersault. We call that a trift. So that's a triple front somersault in the tuck position, followed by a half twist out. And then all doubles after that. So they've gone for the difficulty. But once you start traveling, it, you can start losing height and control. So such a strong start. So clean. Against the code of points, there's very little the judges can take off for that. These are two who have trained together for a long time at Kanazawa University. They both attended it for academic purposes as well. A reminder that one gymnast will probably jump higher than the other. So one gymnast is following the primary gymnast. So one gymnast probably will have maybe lower difficulty and may jump lower. And the other gymnast has to find a way of matching that. So typically you'll have a lead and a follower, though Confusingly, the follower, not confusing, but the follower will actually be the better one, typically, more experienced one. They're into third position, 48.49. So the USA are still leading the horizontal displacement mark there for the Japanese, three tenths lower than for the United States of America, and their synchronization mark quite a bit lower. Difficulty, second highest we've seen so far. This is uh, Laura Paris and uh, Claire Bruce from France. Paris is 31. It is her third world championship. She made her first final early on here in Birmingham and won a medal in the team competition. She is a remarkable story. She's joined by a 19-year-old. going to have to reset and that's fine it is the only risk really is a very small deduction for going over the uh, one of the time elements but it's such a small amount that really you just need to clear your head and forget about it and we have so far in this final and it's not always the case in a synchronized final we have seen every single pair perform all of their routine That unfortunately has brought the French routine to a very early conclusion. And they were the fourth strongest in qualification. It's really regrettable. And it is just what happens sometimes in this sport. Laura Paris and Claire Bruce not able to go any further. The link between the first and second skill is arguably the hardest of the whole competition because You've just gone from having no rotation in your in jumps, straight jumps. You've then created a huge amount of somersault. You've just rotated three times. And as you press down into the bed, if you slip your shoulders very, very slightly too much or at the wrong time to generate that backward somersault, you'll tip backwards and land where she did. It has to be regarded as nothing but a triumph, though, that Laura Paris has come to her third World Championships and managed to take a medal in her first final at the age of 31. The score is 5.25. The United States of America will win at least the silver medal, the People's Republic of China guaranteed bronze. There is just one more partnership left. The host nation, Riley Page and Izzy Songhurst. They were the best performers in qualification with their first attempt by just two hundredths over the Japanese partnership who lie in third. The score they need to beat is 49.49. They scored 49.67 in the preliminary round. However, they didn't do a second routine because they couldn't quite get to their start together. They seem fine here.
certainly is a contending display from Bryony Page and Izzy Songhurst from Great Britain. 48.49 is what is currently holding the bronze. 48.95 holds silver, 49.49 holds gold. That's the United States of America. That was an occasion well handled, Pete. This is huge. So they're the only pair that went with the Triff Pike. So that's the triple front pike with a half twist out. So this skill here, the Triff Pike, attracts 0.2 more difficulties. They've already set themselves up with a higher difficulty than anyone else at this point. But arguably, it's harder out of this skill than it is in the skill. These girls know how to do the Triff Pike easily. It's there, but they have to get right, and they did. They've got so many medals, these two. Bryony Page has two Olympic medals. They've got multiple World Championship honours, including the team all-around title last year in the case of Izzy Songhurst. But a synchronised medal, that's missing from the collection. A job well done. It's been such an emotionally gruelling time for them in terms of Olympic qualification. They have now got themselves a medal in the synchronised competition, 48.83. It is bronze for Great Britain and the United States of America, the champions. Peter, the start, you said synchronisation is the only important thing here. But last time it was the top synchronisation that won the gold. It's the same this time as well. The USA 19.14 for synchronisation. They have won the world title ahead of China. They were nearly a mark ahead almost, so a 0.6 ahead of everyone else in synchronicity. Uh, 0.2 over the Canadians, but broadly, their synchronicity made a huge, huge difference. And the People's Republic of China, the silver medalists for Chu Zheng. It is her first medal at her first World Championships. And that's a really special moment for her and also for the uh, Americans who've been in such good form on the World Cup circuit. They've converted that to the World Championships. I'm waiting to congratulate them. What a nice uh, moment that is. Uyama Megu and Mori Hikaru, the World Champions from last year who finished fourth. They were first over to offer their congratulations. Classified results in the women's synchronised trampoline final. The bronze medal to the host nation, Great Britain. The silver medal to the People's Republic of China. And the gold medal to the United States of America. And they really did win it well. Let's have a look back at the best moments of the women's synchronised trampoline final.
More action to come in Birmingham at the 36th FIG Trampoline Gymnastics World Championships. We have the men's synchronised trampoline final and it will be with you very shortly. The men's synchronised trampoline final is the next event at Birmingham 2023. The finalists in the men's synchronised trampoline competition at Birmingham 2023. Ukraine with Mikola Prostorov and Anton Davidenko, the top performers in qualification. They will go fifth in the order. We'll start with the host nation, Great Britain. Here are the contenders. <laughs> Love it, what a good start. Representing the USA, Ruben Padilla and Alexei Shosta. Representing the Ukraine, Nikola Kostorov and Anton Zanzinko. Representing Portugal. Lucas Santos and Gabriel Albuquerque. Representing France, Pierre Gazou and Morgan De Niro De Niro. Representing Sweden, Oscar Smith and Jonas Neufors. Let me hear you roar for Great Britain's Corey Walks and Zach Pazavanos. These are the men's synchronised trampoline finalists. There they are, the contenders.
warm-up time begins for these athletes in the men's synchronised trampoline final. Two stories to pick up on here that are really worth indulging in for a moment. Mikola Prostorov and Anton Davidenko of Ukraine, who were the top performers in qualification, they have had quite a journey over the course of the World Championships. It's their sixth World Championships. For Prostorov, it's only his second ever final. He was fifth in 2015. For Davidenko, it's his first ever final. And they've come in as the top performers in qualification. That's remarkable. It really is. The pressure they're under now to just put down the same routine they did earlier is going to be huge. And the last partnership to go, as we have a look at the uh, British pair of Corey Walks and Zach Pezamanos, are the Swedish duo of Oscar Smith and uh, Jonas Nordfors. Nordfors is competing at his 11th World Championships. It is the first time he's ever made a final, the 30-year-old. 32-year-old Oscar Smith is at his eighth World Championships, his first since 2019, and it's only his second ever final. That's another fantastic story. It is quite amazing. Uh, it was his coach, I bumped into him the other day, it was his coach that persuaded him to come back. He actually retired, but decided to come back. That's Oscar there. Decided to come back because his coach asked him very nicely. He's had awful injuries. He missed a, a couple of years a decade ago. We just saw there Jonas Nordforsch, who describes himself as the guy with the lumberjack beard. His words, I just stress. The Dutch watching on. Rickert Kurthausen, he's the one with the lighter hair, and uh, Jordi Moll, 22 and 21 respectively. Feldhausen's in his first senior world championships. We have a representation from Portugal, Lucas Santos and Gabriel Albuquerque. The young man, Albuquerque, 17, he had a rough time of things in the team trampoline final, but he's a wonderful young gymnast, junior world champion. Worth noting in the qualifications, that was where 16 gymnasts were um, narrowing down to eight. Eight of the pairs terminated their routine early. Early, They didn't finish the full routine. And that's because these routines are incredibly difficult. If they want to shot at the medals, they need to push uh, to into sort of the 15-8 difficulty. And that's around three triples, potentially even four triples. But with that comes huge risk in terminating early. The score of the first reserves Belgium's Florian van der Berger and Darwin Nabilier, 20.14. So they managed to arrive as the first reserve without a fully completed routine. The same for Smith and Nordfors actually getting into the final, though they did produce a much cleaner routine in the first qualification stage, which got them into that, if you will, semi-final, that second round of qualifying. And that's why it's so important, even if the routine's going wrong, to continue as best you can, because you never know what's going to happen. You've seen it many times over the years, Pete, I've seen it many times over the years, a synchronised trampoline final where the first pair goes through cleanly, and then suddenly, five routines later, nobody's stayed on and they're at the top of the leaderboard yep. still. Yep, it's putting down a score. So always say to gymnasts, just put down your best score. Don't worry if you've made a mistake, just forget about it, put down a score. It, you just never know where you're going to land. I always talk about it, the World Games 2017 Women's Synchronised Final, the uh, Ukrainian partnership were, I think, first to go or second to go, and they were the seventh strongest qualifiers. They just stood there and watched as everyone else struggled and suddenly they were the World Games champions. It does happen surprisingly often. When you're doing a routine that is so tricky, you just have to put it all together and make sure that you get your score. We're looking at oh. scores between 49 and 52, Good. but it could be a 53 that wins or it could be a, a 48 that wins, who knows? I just want to pick up on something you said there, which is really interesting about just doing your routine because that's got to be quite difficult as an athlete to ignore completely all of the variables that you can't control, to ignore the fact that the favourites have just come off or that the eight best qualifiers have just done the routine of their lives. Can you block that out? I imagine they can, Ollie. Um, I struggled. It was. I found it really difficult. And, and what I'm so grateful for 
is I now know that I got the opportunity to get to the top level and I couldn't handle it. Um, I did sort of handle it towards the end, but I know how hard it is and that I have even more respect for what these gymnasts can do here. Well, you won a World Championship medal, so you didn't do half bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, one in six attempts it was. <laughs> but, I mean, that's what is so tough, isn't it, with this sport? Because it, it, it's not like, let's take, for example, a racket sport where you can have a really bad first five, ten minutes of the match. You can be double faulting repeatedly. That's all I ever see to do when I play tennis. And then... Actually, you can ease into it. It's a longer contest with its own very different challenges. But there's an opportunity to come back. And in trampoline gymnastics, there is no opportunity to come back. There really isn't. And it's one of the cruelest parts of sport. That's why I love this new um, all-around format, because there is a chance that gymnasts get another attempt. I've flown all the way from Great Britain to Colombia to make a mistake straight away, and that's it. The warm-ups are done. The final will begin shortly. Zamanos and Corey Walks from Great Britain, the fourth best in qualification. Their strongest score was 50.32. That's the one that they produced in the second stage of qualification. So they've been getting better and better as it's gone on. Part of the British team that made it onto the podium. me early on in that routine. Zach Persimanos was living life on the edge. There was gasping in the crowd and he did very well to get through that. That was great management of the routine from the young man from Merseyside. He is so resilient to be that close to the end and just stay composed, not let it worry him. So you come in, you kick out and you see that you're in the right place. And here, he now knows he's in the wrong place but he just presses up, presses his feet down, gets into the right place. He can then affect the rhythm slightly. You just have to, he's just pushing through it. That's the, what we call the half in Rudy out pike. So that's a half twist in, pike front and then a Rudy out in the last somersault. <laughs> 49.52, the score for Great Britain. That's a little below their qualification performance by eight tenths. Excellent from Germany, I am Luxman and, and Fabian Vogel of Germany. Vogel won half of the world champions in this event from last year with Matthias Fleiderer. He's joined the 28-year-old by 20-year-old Kyle Laugstermann. He was born in California but lives and trains in Cottbus, a great gymnastics city. He's new to the world championship scene. His partner is at his sixth world championships. They're both part of the sports division of the German Armed Forces.
Well done to Carl Alstermann there, the young man who joins one half of the synchronised gold medal winning partnership from last year. How good was he jumping in alongside this veteran of synchronised trampolining? That's pressure. It really is. And this is where they make the sport look easy. It's frustrating how easy they look it. They didn't have to fight. They didn't. They made their lives easy by setting themselves up every time. It's like the baton in the relay. Every time they pass the baton to the next skill. So every skill they kick out, they see it, and they make life easy for themselves to prepare for the next skill. He's been loving being in Birmingham, Kyle Lauksterman. He's a passionate uh, coffee enthusiast. He's been sampling uh, the local uh, delicacies by the arena. And he's basking in the glory of the crowd here as he gets 51.13. Now to the Dutch with Rikker uh, Tefeldhausen and Jordi Moll. It is Feldhausen. He has the lighter here. He's making his Senior World Championship debut. He made two finals at the Junior World Championships, including being sixth in the individual event last year. Very fine young gymnasts, these two. Well, they acquainted themselves with every single inch of the trampoline bed there and did extraordinarily well to stay on and keep it going. They uh, shake their heads and uh, break into almost a relieved and astonished grin. I mean, they did brilliantly to keep going with that routine, Pete. They got their money's worth with the trampoline bed there. <laughs> the springs are very strong, so we can't see the springs. They're under the frame pad. You might have heard them. Make, might have heard a spring make a noise. That's where you get so close to the spring that it's actually the specific one that's under tension. There is always risk that spring breaks, but these days equipment's so strong that doesn't happen. So it can be so difficult when early on in the routine you know you're slightly out and there Forty-eight point four six. That is lower than their qualification score by about half a mark. Synchronization mark seventeen point six six. The United States of America. Ruben Padilla, the two-time reigning double mini trampoline world champion, with Alexi Shostak. These two gentlemen have come here from Santiago in Chile where they won the Pan American Games title. Very, very important competition for the American gymnasts. Another of those routines that really skated on thin ice, but a relieved Ruben Padilla pumps his fists and breaks into his characteristic grin at the end of it. Another example, Pete, of real routine management of resilience. It's so difficult when you know you're towards the end of the trampoline and you know your momentum's going backwards. You, you have a feeling you're going to come off the trampoline, so you have to fight that emotion and just say, no, I can control this. And Ruben is one of the absolute masters of that. Yes, he's only 22, but he's incredibly experienced. Well, he's one of my heroes. Now, you might see Ruben kicks out a bit earlier. And that's OK, because as long as they kick out by upside down, the judges will be happy with it against the code of points. But the dynamics, when you kick out, based on your leg length, will affect the physics. So he needs to kick out a bit earlier to make sure he slows down the somersault. Yeah. 
Germany leading the way at the moment on 51.13. It remains thus 50.77 for the United States of America. Their synchronization a little lower than the synchronization of the Germans, but their execution was high, and that was really key, the form of the USA. And next in the UK, Vancouver, Kostov, and Anton Davidenko. The top performers in qualification, Mikola Prostrov and Anton Davidenko of Ukraine. Six world championships for these two. Prostorov, just his second final. Davidenko, his first ever final. And the routine, unfortunately, oh no, has come to an end. The top performers in qualification who scored 52.27, and that would have put them into the lead. And you just feel here, don't you, Pete? These are two very experienced gymnasts who have so rarely managed to make it into a final. This is where they've gone big. So they've gone for the hardest routine we've seen. They've gone with a three triple start. So they're pulling into another triple, ready for a third triple. That's so much harder. You have less time to see, less, more forces going on. Adds the risk. Does give you the difficulty score, but that's what can happen, unfortunately. Huge shame. There's nothing that one can say that will take time to sink in. 15.85. Germany, the USA, Great Britain, one, two, and three, with three to go. Next up from Portugal, Lucas Santos and Gabriel Albuquerque. Gabriel Albuquerque, the 17-year-old debutant at the World Championships, and Lucas Santos from Portugal. Oh. Santos, only four oh. years old, 21, the sixth best in qualification. What a save. Oh, goodness, that time it got away from him. Well. Sometimes an incredible save is also the prequel to the gymnast coming off a couple of skills later because the trajectory just starts to go completely all over the place and once again difficulties for Portugal in a big final. There's a big difference between completing the skill and being in complete control of the skill. And sadly, though he did manage to complete the, complete the skill, he wasn't in the right place to be able to continue. Also going for the three triple start. So that's the third triple there. Huge difficulty. We've gone so long at the back there. These are two very young gymnasts. Albuquerque, the one who uh, stayed on just 17, but he came off in the team competition because he'd lost height there. He had to slip the hips to make sure that he stayed on the trampoline. So as you're pushing down, if you need to, if you're doing a backwards somersault and you want to travel forwards, you have to slip the hips forwards, which is a very tricky skill and ultimately loses you height as well. Yeah. 25.15. The Portuguese. As a result, Germany have guaranteed themselves a medal. Place on the podium for Kaio Labstermann and Fabian Vogel. <laughs> Twenty-eight and twenty-four, respectively. Oh. 
They were the third best in qualification, 50.37. That would put them third on the scoreboard here. They're also very close. Tell you what, this is a nerve wracking synchronized final. We're seeing real difficulty being attempted, and as a result of it, some gymnasts are coming very close to coming off the apparatus. This is where it's the combination of scores really make a difference. So they, they were the first pair to complete a routine with that three triple start. They will get slightly higher difficulty for it, but the horizontal displacement, so that's where they land on the trampoline, a bit like a dartboard, did then score lower. Guzu will know exactly what sort of number is going to come. He's a qualified judge himself. It is 49.98. They are into the bronze medal position with the joint highest difficulty we've seen so far, but the lowest horizontal displacement score of all of the completed routines. Is there a chance? for something extraordinary to happen. For Sweden, Oscar Smith and Jonas Nordfors. Smith, who has returned to competition at the request of his coach. It's his eighth World Championships, his first final since 2018, only his second ever. And Jonas Nordfors, his 11th World Championships. He's the gentleman in the foreground in his first ever final. Close. Oh, really close. 11 World Championships, and he made a final. And unfortunately, he couldn't quite get the whole way through the routine. So much did he want that, Jonas Nordforsch. They were fighting, so we don't have time of flight in this. Synchronicity is the score that counts in synchronized trampolining, not time of flight. So they were a bit lower than the other gymnasts. And when you're lower, though you don't necessarily get a score for it, it gives you less time to complete all the parts of the element that you need to do, you know, the twist and the somersault and the early lineouts. So they were fighting here, a lot lower than I'm sure they would have liked. And perhaps the problem here Pete, psychologically, as they came into that routine within touching distance with 49.98 as the bronze medal mark, a score they're absolutely capable of getting. There's huge debate over where gymnasts would like to compete, or when in the sequence they'd like to compete. Some really don't like going first because of the pressure, but ideally, eighth is typically where you'd prefer to be because you can see where everyone else is but having been there you have to be able to hold it together and that's very difficult it's an absolute triumph that oscar smith is even here after the injuries he's had in his career congratulations to the pair of them on making that final they were close 44.04 with an incomplete routine your heart goes out to them it really does United States of America are on the podium, but here's a really special moment. How often does this happen? Somebody wins a World Championship synchronized title two years in a row, but with a different partner on each occasion. Fabian Vogel won it with Matthias Fleider last time. Now he wins it with Kaya Laufstermann. Brilliant for the veteran German and for the young man alongside him. And the French, Pierre Guzou and Morgan Demiro, or Domiro, 
taking bronze. Ooh. USA <laughs> second. Oh man. Oh. Oh. oh, no, that camera. Yeah. Well, we're up here right oh, now. We're up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ruben Padilla, a medalist uh, that's fine. Right. in two very different disciplines at these championships. That's a fine accomplishment. But, Pete, how well that young man did. Absolutely. The men's synchronized trampoline final. The classified results France with the bronze medal, the United States of America winning the silver, and Germany taking the gold. Brilliant result for Kyle Lauchsterman and Fabian Vogel. Let's remind ourselves of how the race was run and how the medals were won. We have around about five minutes until the next event takes place here in Birmingham. We're going to move on to the individual finals shortly, starting with the women's competition. And it will be the men's, and then to conclude our coverage today, the team all around final. So you have a few minutes or so until the start of the next event here in Birmingham. Oh, yeah! 
Got a bit of top action going on as well. It's, I mean, this is a whole treat. Team USA, very talented. Give a round of applause. Well done, Bongo Pam. Move on, find somebody else. Scan around. If you want it, move around a lot. It reacts really well to movement. Bongo Pam is scanning. It's going in. He's looking for his target. Has he found his target? Yes, it has. She's shot. He's like, oh, there we go. Team GB is very own Kirsty Wade. Play those bongos. I love, I love how relaxed the people in front of you are that you're doing that. They just don't care, do they? Not a monkey's given. All right, let's scan around one more time. Let's keep going. If you want to play the bongos, give us a little bit of action. Let Bongo Cam zoom in. Find these new targets. Oh, oh, this is good. Is he going there? He's going to do it. Is he going right? He's going there. Play the bongos. It's, it's a duo. Play the bongos together. Other way, other way. That's it. Not those bongos. Play those bongos. Who knew Phil Mitchell could play the bongos so well? Thank you. I think we've got time for one more. Let's scan around for the very last time by the looks of it. Find our next and possibly last bongo player. Uh-oh, he's a judge. He's having a deep conversation, but will he know it's on the big screen? It's time to play those bongos. Go, go, go! Other way, other way. That's it, we got it, we got it, yes. I think we've got time for one more. Do you want one more? Let's scan for one more, please, Bongo Cam. One more person, one more victim. Make it a good one, Bongo Cam. Scan around. Make it someone who really wants it or someone who does not have a clue what's going on. Coming, zooming in. He's getting there, he's going for it. Yes, put your copper suit down. Play those bongos. Or pretend you're a zombie. Whatever works for you. We're, we don't mind. We're very open here. All right. I think we can say thank you so much to all of our bongo players. Give them a round of applause. And hopefully we'll have bongo down again a little bit later on. As for those AI images, the AI supercomputer is currently working on them. We'll try and show you some of those a little bit later on. Lots of things to come your way. We'll try and keep you entertained and energised in between all the brilliant gymnastics that you've ever seen. The women's individual trampoline final is coming up here in Birmingham and it's going to be an absolutely fascinating affair. What a fantastic women's individual trampoline final. This promises to be the Olympic champion. Zhu Shui Ying goes second in the order. We will also have her teammate Hu Yi Chung, who was the top performer in qualification. We've got Bryony Page and Izzy Songhurst from the host nation. A duo from Brazil making history. And Sofia Meto from Canada. And all of that after Jessica Stevens gets us started. It is the women's individual trampoline final. Let's have a look at the A2 maiden group. Jessica Stevens. The reigning Pan American Games champion, Jessica Stevens of the USA. There is the reigning Olympic champion, Zhu Shui Ying. Representing China. 
Yi Chang Hu. Wu Yi Chang, the top performer Brazil, in the qualification Perez. round. The reigning Pan American America. champion Sofia. in individual competition, Brazil's Camila Gomez. Sofia Neto of Brazil. Canada, silver medalist Alice in this event Gomez. in 2017. Alice Gomez of Brazil, no relation to uh, Camilla, Brian but her synchronized Lee, partner. Brianie Page. Brianie Page, the two-time Olympic medalist uh, and the world champion from 2021. Izzy Songhurst. And also from the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Izzy Songhurst, the eighth best performer in qualification and many times a world championship medalist. He's at the women's trampoline finals. We have the current Olympic champion. We've got a whole host of continental champions. We've got people who've been on the world championship podium in this event in years gone by. It is going to be a grand stand women's trampoline final. And we should also say at this point, huge congratulations to any athlete who makes it through, not just to a world championship final, but to this particular world championship final, because with it, Pete, came the pressure of Olympic qualification. It doesn't get any bigger than this. The Olympics are obviously every four years, so you can spend so long building up to get to the point where pretty much one routine counts. That was it, and they've already done that, but the relief after getting it right is just phenomenal for them. These gymnasts can breathe a sigh of relief knowing their job in one sense has been done. They have qualified a place, not for themselves, but their nation at the Olympic Games. But now they can stop relaxing because it's a World Championship final that's coming up. So it's that strange thing, isn't it? It's not so much the calm after the storm, it's the calm in between two storms. Exactly. So, as you said, the nation gets the Olympic space. So they can now choose who actually goes to the Olympic Games. There's only 16 spaces for men and 16 spaces for women. So it's up to the coaches and the various people within their nation to decide who goes so as well as trying to become world champion they also need to impress their own body of people that they they are the right people to go to the olympics they can handle the pressure and it's who gets to go to the olympics as the reigning champion of the world which is a massive psychological boost it sure is we've seen a variety of um scores throughout the qualification you know, the biggest one was the execution score of 16.8. That is a huge score. In my head, that's 8.4s. It's, it's doubled. But essentially, it's a score out of 20. 16.8 got the top spot. So that's where the routine looks pretty much flawless. So that's where the shapes are tight, straight legs in the pike position, pointed toes, tight when they're in the tuck position, tight knees into their chest, um, narrow arms, lots and lots of different elements. Those of you who are new to watching trampoline gymnastics, it is probably worth a quick explainer of what you're going to see. The routines will be judged in terms of their difficulty, their execution, their time of flight, essentially the amplitude that the gymnast has, and the horizontal displacement. The horizontal displacement is determined there by how far you stray from X marks the spot where the golden treasure is located in trampoline gymnastics. The closer you get to the far corners of the trampoline bed, the closer you come to a 0.3 deduction every time you stray to that area. So that is something that needs to be factored in as you're watching it. But also, I think difficulty is one of the hardest things, Pete, to see if you're new to watching trampolining, because we tend to focus on how well things are done without sometimes noticing that people have chucked in a whole extra twist or two than others, and she's won who is capable of monstrous difficulty. I cannot explain how big a moment this is. So in qualification, every gymnast had a 14 difficulty, somewhere around there, which is two triples and, and remaining double somersaults. Whereas Bryony has the capability to do that. 
a second triple in the well, a triple in the second element, followed by another triple in the third element. So if Bryony does a three triple start, she will have the highest difficulty in this round. Unless someone else does it, we'll have to see. Yes, that's right. And, and sometimes we do get that in finals where people will uh, really put something a little unexpected in. It's sometimes they're closely kept secrets. I know Bryony wasn't necessarily telling people around her work on this because it's it's something you want to kind of keep in the locker. There we go. So that's a triple followed by a double and then the triple again. So that will be again a two triple start. <laughs> Difficulty is, Ollie was saying, is only one of the four score elements. So if you have that difficulty, you have to back it up with the execution, time of flight and horizontal displacement. Izzy Songhurst, the second British representative in this final. And she was a slightly higher scorer in the crucial second qualification round than Bryony Page. So Izzy, Isabel Songhurst had the slowest difficulty in the previous round, but had brilliant execution, time of flight, and not bad horizontal displacement. So again, if you get that combination right, it doesn't make it doesn't necessarily make the biggest of differences. The gymnast will undertake ten skills. They may not interrupt their routine. Now, obviously, in the most uh, literal sense, that means they cannot exit the apparatus and get back on it, but they also can't do something that is completely empty on the apparatus. Yep, a straight jump and that's it. Um, often it's a movement such as a whip, you know, a little low somersault or something where the routine is terminated and that's where full elasticity of the bed is not used and that will be terminated even if it looks like a somersault, if it's a really low sort of flicky skill then it will uh, also be terminated. So many variables. So little chance to get it right. What a great moment for Brazil, having Camila Gomez and Alice Gomez in this final. Alice Gomez, who we just saw there, a South American Games medalist. Jessica Stevens from the United States of America gets this women's individual trampoline final underway at the World Championships, taking place at Arena Birmingham in the United Kingdom. She is the reigning Pan American Games champion in individual trampoline gymnastics. She won the title in Santiago and then came directly here. Jessica Stevens of the United States of America, the 23-year-old who lives in Maryland. She was born in Great Falls in Montana, and she's been in great form of late. Such a strong start to the competition, putting everything together. So here we've got the Triff Pike, so that's the first skill, followed by a half-in, half-out pike. And then here, look at this line-out, bam. So she's kicking out of the skill really early, which gives her lots of time to see and prepare for the next element. That tight shape, the judges are looking for a tight pike and that early line out, so going into straight position. Holds the shape well and then there, she can see down into the trampoline and press really well 
ready to kick out and see. So because she's kicking out so early, she gets more time. She was sixth in the final last year. She's developed enormously lately, and she has scored a huge 55.74. And we might well have just seen a medal contending display there from Jess Stevens. Zhu Shui Ying of the People's Republic of China, the reigning Olympic champion, the 25 year old from Beijing. She donated her gold medal and her competition attire after the Olympic Games to the Tianjin Sports Museum so that people could see them and hopefully become inspired like she was as a youngster to take up the sport. Shui Ying said after the Olympic Games that she treated it simply like a training routine to not pressurize herself. She actually thought she was more stable in the final than in her practice session. This is incredible. Such resilience again. So the Triff Pikes, that's the triple front with a half twist out, comes out. There, she's taking control in the relatively simple skill of the double back pike, but attracting huge execution scores. And there, the shoulders are tipping forwards. So this triple front with a half twist, known as a triff, has tipped massively forwards, which makes the next skill so difficult to control, but yet she does it easily. She's already five times a world champion, but doesn't have the individual title yet. She leads with 56.46. That is going to be very difficult to beat. Very difficult. The execution, 17. Wu Yi Chung from the People's Republic of China, 24. It is her 25th birthday tomorrow. Will she gain a rather splendid early present here in this final? She's just come from the Asian Games in Hangzhou, in her own country where she won the silver medal in this event. It's Chinese trampoline gymnastics at its best. That is to say, it is a ballet in the air. They are so elegant and stylish, and Hu Yi Chung has demonstrated it perfectly. Incredible balance. All four elements that you need for parts to get a high score. So a difficulty there with the triple somersault. Great execution, always lining out early. Tight shapes, kicking out again. Good time of flight, maintaining height, and finally, good horizontal displacement, being near the cross every time. She's coached by the great Dong Dong, multiple world and Olympic champion.
and she goes in the third place, 55.72. It's the execution so far of Zhu Shui Ying that's keeping her in top spot. Now to Briony Page of Great Britain, who might have some advantage in terms of difficulty, depending on what we see here from the 32-year-old. The first British gymnast to ever win an Olympic trampoline medal. And she has two of them to boot. The 10th World Championships. It all started in Birmingham in 2011. Where do you even begin with this woman? This absolutely Stunning athlete as her teammate Izzy Sotnhurst watches on. What more is there to say about Bryony Page, who has pushed the bar in this sport, who has transformed the presence of trampoline gymnastics in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. What an athlete and what a performance in this final. This is incredible. So it's got the trip pikes, that's the first triple, into the second triple, that's a half in triple with a half twist out, followed by the third triple. So that's already way up on difficulty than the other gymnasts. Holding it together, knowing that you've got so much more complexity and that the way in which it's scored, the difficulty doesn't necessarily make a huge difference in the scoring. So when you do this big difficulty, you are really backing yourself to maintain control. If you're watching this as a young gymnast and you've been struggling, if you're finding it hard to get through your routines, watch what she's doing here and know that Bryony Page had lost move syndrome early on in her life. She could barely do anything on the apparatus. It's not over for you. It wasn't over for her. She has proven that anything is possible, no matter how bad your struggles are. She leads, she leads, 15.8 difficulty. It is stunning. 56.68, she's in the gold medal position. It might be the World Championship winning performance. Throughout her life, she has never given up. <laughs> to Camila Gomez of Brazil, the 28-year-old who competes here at her ninth World Championships. She is the reigning Pan American champion in individual trampolining. She's spent most of her career in the United States of America, training in New Jersey. What a save, what a save. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, she so nearly managed to rescue that. She so nearly managed to rescue it, Pete. The beginning was incredible. That first skill, the trip pikes, that's the triple front somersault pike with a half twist out, had such an early line out. She had so much somersault, so much height, it looked like it was going to be really special. We we'll just remind ourselves, she's done the hard bit, she's got the Olympic qualification spot for her nation. So the shoulders just tip forward slightly, and then once you're towards the back of the trampoline, it can be a lot harder to take control of the next element. I tell you what, the toughness of these athletes. It might look elegant, but there's been a lot of hard work that goes into these routines and sadly this thing this does happen Camila Gomez 17.65 
hugely well done, though, to the Brazilian squad getting two into this final. Let's welcome to the trampoline for Great Britain, Izzy Songhurst. Izzy Songhurst of Great Britain. The 24-year-old from the south coast, a suburb of Poole in Dorset. A real centre of great trampoline gymnastics in the UK. And here is one of the great trampoline gymnasts in this country. Delightfully crisp and clean gymnast. Bryony Page loves it watching on Izzy Songhurst. What a competition she's had. And what a finalist she's become over the course of her career. She really has to put this together in front of a home crowd after the emotions of looking towards Olympic qualification over this competition. It's just amazing to see her still maintain composure. That was very slightly lower difficulty than the other gymnasts because it had a one triple start. So this is a triff here. And then here, that's often where gymnasts go for a second triple, but instead going for the double somersault, but is able to maintain phenomenal execution and control. Holding her arms in tight to the body, which demonstrates the line out that the judges will be looking for. So many emotions now giving way to absolute relief. 54.24 for Izzy Songhurst, she's in fifth place. Still leading the way and secure of a medal, Bryony Page, the world champion from 2021. Sofiane Meto of Canada. She's 25 from La Prairie in Quebec. It is her sixth consecutive world championships. She won the individual silver medal in 2017 in Sofia. And six times she's been a Pan-American champion. Somebody who's shown herself to be at home in a big final year after year after year is Sophia Neto of Canada. Canada, one of the absolute great trampoline nations in the world. They really are. Always love seeing the Canadians compete in trampoline. Such a high quality. And again here, just making it look easy because everything is going to plan. Always strong, always going high, getting the early line outs there, holding the arms in tight to the body. Quite a complex link at the end there. So it's a double front with a one and a half twist out, straight into a double back straight with a double twist. We call that Rudy out, Pike, full, full straight. The graduate of accounting from the University of Quebec waits for the numbers. 55.12 for Sophia Mateau. She is fifth. Bryony Page has won at least the silver medal. Zhu Shui Ying, the Olympic champion, 
is also on the podium. One to go. Alice Gomez of Brazil, the fourth best performer in qualification. Her score was 55.06. She needs a jump of about three quarters of a mark to get onto the podium. She is from beautiful Belo Horizonte in Minas Gerais, a lovely part of Brazil. from Alice Gomez to conclude. Difficulty-wise, it is not the hugest that we will see, but it was crisp, it was clean, and it was something that brings to a close a wonderful championship for Brazil that has seen them perform excellently in this women's event. Two in the final, the Brazilians. Great accomplishment. And something to say about Alice Gomez as well, just to contextualise this, is that she had knee surgery last year. She missed five months of competition. So the fact that she's made it to this stage and performed this well a year on from that is brilliant. It really is. And with such a complex routine, putting together such difficulty when it counts. She and Camila Gomez have been jumping together for years as synchro partners. 15.28, well done to Alice Gomez. It means that great Britain's Bryony Page is the champion of the world in individual trampoline gymnastics for the second time. Two years after winning the title in Azerbaijan, she beats the Olympic champion, Zhu Shui Ying, with months to go until Paris. Incredible, Pete. <laughs> I'm a little bit lost for words, to be honest. I am so happy for her, what she's been through, putting this all together now, under all this pressure, knowing your friends, your family, everyone's here. Not Grandma Sushi, her cat, but pretty much everyone else is here to watch and support this, and how she's put it together, though. Well, I do know, because she's that good. A lot of emotion. A lot of emotion in this place. And Izzy Songhurst, well done to her. Ju Shui Ying, 56.46. That's very often the score good enough to win. And Jess Stevens of the USA, the Pan American Games gold medalist, taking the bronze. What a statement to make by Bryony Page, ahead of the Olympic Games, to beat the Olympic champion and to demonstrate that difficulty. But Jess Stevens, who's getting a massive hug right now from the new world champion, we said, didn't we, at the start, Pete, that was potentially a medal-winning performance right off the bat from Stevens. It really was. It's the jeopardy, knowing that you put down a good routine and then you just have to sit there and wait. When you compete first, you just have to sit, you're helpless. You just watch seven other gymnasts and hope they do well. The classified results in the women's trampoline final at the World Championships. Bronze for Jessica Stevens of the United States of America. The silver medal to reigning Olympic champion Zhu Shui Ying of the People's Republic of China. And the gold medal won by Great Britain's Bryony Page in front of her home crowd in the same city where she won her first World Championship honours in 2011. Let's remind ourselves of how this final transpired.
Well, how about something to calm you down? What about the men's individual final? That should be nice and quiet and peaceful. The men's individual trampoline final is the last individual event to take place at these World Championships. The finalists in the men's individual trampoline competition at Birmingham 2023. The top performer in qualification, Wang Zisai of the People's Republic of China, the 17-year-old. But just pay attention to Benny Rizani of Austria, who'll go before him. He was the second best in qualifying. No Austrian has ever won a medal in any event at the Trampoline Gymnastics World Championships. Here are the contenders, the men's trampoline final. final. Representing Portugal, Pedro Pereira. We'll start with Pedro Ferreira, Youth Olympic Games medalist in 2014. Representing Austria, Benny Vizani. And then move to Benny Vizani, Youth Olympic Games medalist in 2018. No Austrian has ever won a medal at the World Republic Championships. Of China, Zisei Wang. Wang Zisai of the People's Republic of China, the 17-year-old who was the runner-up at the Junior World Championships last year. Nishio Kuryuse of Japan, individual silver medalist two years ago. Yan Lang Yu of the People's Republic of China, the world champion from 2021. Gabriel Albuquerque of Portugal, the reigning junior world champion. Sakai Ryosuke of Japan, a two-time world championship medalist. Please welcome from Great Britain, Zach Pazamanos. And the reigning British champion, Zach Pazamanos. These are your men's trampoline finalists. I don't know if you noticed that, but Benny Vizani just dashed into place at the last minute. He almost missed his place in the lineup. Uh, we don't want to miss out on him because he's the second best performer in qualification, the Austrian. And no Austrian has ever won a medal at the Trampoline Gymnastics World Championships. And hopefully he doesn't think about that right now. Yes. Because that is one of the tricky things. Knowing you're breaking new ground is something that only the very, very best can do. So the difficulty in the men's event is going to be very interesting here. So there's a range in qualification between 16.2 and 18.0. 18.0 is around six or seven triples. So we're getting close. It wasn't long ago the men were doing three triples. Now we could be seeing four, five, six, four. We've actually got the world record holder here who did seven to break that world record. Nishioka Ryusei is an absolutely extraordinary gymnast. He'll go fourth in the order. And yes, he has been pushing 
the uh, boundaries of what is possible in a trampoline routine for many, many years. Of course, the danger can be that you put so much difficulty in that your form completely deteriorates and, and you're not fully in control. And I suppose my question to you, Pete, as somebody who's won a world championship medal, as somebody who's coached a lot of athletes coming through, how do athletes know when that skill they've been working on in training is now competition ready? It's really interesting. So it can be a variety between athlete-led or coach-led. So often I find it's up to the athlete, the gymnast, to decide whether that skill is ready. But equally, it depends really on their temperament. Some gymnasts will want to compete that skill maybe earlier than is ideal. But often, if the gymnast says they're ready, they are actually ready. And it typically, I would say, is based on numbers. Have they done 50, 100? Have they linked them in routines? Have they done them in training under pressure? Have they connected them with other skills? How do you recreate pressure in training? Oh, I had really fun with this one. So we're a mock competition with a gymnast. Just before she went out to the World Championships, I intentionally invited all her friends and family <laughs> and made it as awkward as possible. I, I had to make, I took a risk because she was either going to absolutely smash it or it, she was going to crumble. But I felt she was ready. So they brought banners and because she was going out to compete in Japan. So unfortunately, her friends and family couldn't get out there. So I made it as awkward as possible to recreate that pressure. No different than a penalty shootout in a football World Cup trying to make it as hard as possible. That's a great uh, bit of intuition as a, a coach to know that, uh, that that's the right move. And, and, and obviously, you know, that, that is about developing your relationship, isn't it, with the athlete and actually knowing them as a human being, not simply knowing them as a machine that performs lots of skills. And uh, he's got some pretty impressive skills as Benny Rizani, the 22-year-old youth Olympic Games bronze medalist from 2018. He looks quite relaxed, doesn't he? <laughs> He's ready to create a spectacle here for his nation. So gymnasts get what we call one touch. So that's one go on the trampoline prior to the routine. And a lot of this is getting used to the equipment. So before this has started, they would have used the trampolines to the side behind uh, where we can see. That's where they have time to get warm, get the routines going. But when they come out here, it's different. The lights are different, the feelings are different, the sounds are different. And you need to orientate yourself as quickly as possible. And you only get that one chance on the trampoline. That can make a huge difference to your temperament. Meanwhile, as I'm sure you saw, there are a lot of the athletes who've completed their competition are taking seats in the audience. And they're getting ready not just for this event, but for the team all around final. And how wonderful to see such a, a big crowd here at the Arena Birmingham. A very edgy crowd, I think it's safe to say, that the there was a real nervousness watching those uh, earlier finals in the day, the uh, two synchronised finals and the women's individual final. So fortunate to have uh, for the home nation gymnasts in the final. That's obviously what every host nation wants because that creates that extra level of drama. This is the last warm-up. It's Sakai Ryosuke. He competed at the Olympic Games in front of... Uh, I was going to say in front of a home crowd, but of course it was the Tokyo Olympic Games, so there was no... Uh, home crowd there, but uh, in his uh, home city for training purposes. So that warm-up's not gone completely to plan, but he is good enough to just put that behind him and focus on what he's got to do in a minute. The warm-ups are over. The trampolines can move. There's so much force going through the trampoline that they can actually very subtly move. So those volunteers there were just pulling the trampoline back to make sure the legs are as stable as possible. It's incredibly important. We are ready to get things on the way in this final. The men's individual trampoline final begins. Pedro Ferreira is the first to go. He's 26. 
from Vila do Conde in the Porto district in the northwest of the country, a Youth Olympic Games medalist in 2014. He was the sixth best in qualifying. a couple of times there Pedro Ferreira he was close to the edge of the apparatus but he stabilized his performance well electing for a slightly simpler routine it's a slightly low difficulty because it's three triples so the first triple there that's the trift pike pushing up into the second triple the half in trift tuck followed by the third triple and then from there going with the double somersault staying in control electing to maintain height as much as possible. son of an acrobatic no, no, gymnastics coach and an aerobic gymnastics coach. He grew up in the gym, he's so used to competing. And he scores 58.91. This young man has been the talk of the town. The second best performer in qualification, Benny Vizani. No Austrian has ever won a medal at the World Championships of Trampoline Gymnastics. And no Austrian had ever earned a qualification place in trampoline at the Olympic Games until he did it in preparing for this final. He has been absolutely fantastic here. Can he make history yet again? He grins from ear to ear. Oh, that is joyous. Austria is one of the great historic gymnastics nations right there in the early days of competitive gymnastics. How lovely it would be to see them get onto a world championship podium for the first time and for Austrian gymnastics to take center stage again. <laughs> I'm so happy he was able to put it together when it counts. So this is a Triff Rudy Pike. So it's a triple front pike, but then instead of doing the half twist out, he goes with a one and a half twist out. So you're now mixing somersault and twist. But that frees you up to use your other triple somersaults later in the routine. So here, he twists really early, but that means it gives him lots of time to drop in and prepare for the next skill, which is a half in Triff Pike. So it's a huge triple somersault again. He's from Tulin on the banks of the Danube with parks and gardens aplenty. It's called the City of Togetherness. It will be if he gets a medal in this uh, World Championship final because they'll have a street party citywide in his honour. I hope so. <laughs> He'll deserve it. He's... Motto has always been, work until your idols become your rivals. Well, he's leading the way now, 59.59. Could Benny Vizani take a medal and become the first Austrian ever to do it? Wang Zisai of the People's Republic of China. The 17-year-old from Jiangsu province, the third smallest but fourth most populous in China. It's on the east coast of the country. And he makes his senior world championship debut here in Birmingham, having been the 
runner-up in this event at the equivalent of the Junior World Championships called the World Age Group Competition last year. Sort out an Olympic qualification place, no bother. Top qualifier, yeah, sure, why not? Produce that in the final, yes. Seems perfectly reasonable. I mean, that's just extraordinary, isn't it? It really is. Not only has he done the five triple start, he made them look easy. He didn't ever look like he was in trouble. So the first skill, again, this Triff Rudis, that's a triple front with a one and a half twist out. So challenging and yet comfortable into the half-in Triff pipe. So half-in, triple front, half twist out with such early line out. So there, he's kicking out and able to see down and prepare for the next skill, always making his life easy because the skill before is so good. He's won three World Cup medals in his first senior season. <laughs> it's very, very good. And two of them gold. Clearly also a comfortable twister. Some gymnasts will prefer some sorts over twist, but at this level, they can typically do both very, very comfortably. This has got to be up there, no question. 60.68, he's got into the gold medal position. 18 for difficulty, that is six tenths higher than Benny Vizani. <laughs> Forgot his shoes. At least he didn't forget to qualify for the Olympics. And next from Japan, Ryusei Nishioka. Nishioka Ryusei of Japan. Individual silver medalist in Baku in 2021. The third best qualifier for this final and the taskmaster when it comes to difficulty. He's the man who's always pushing the limits. Just so much fun to watch. Nishio Kuryusei, the 20-year-old in his third World Championships. The man who challenges the limits of this sport, Pete. He really does. So this is now a six triple. I love how this is building. This is six triple somersaults early on in the routine. You can only put the skill in if it's completely ready, if you know you can connect it with the next skill. So choosing to do this one here, Wow, that's a triple front somersault with a one and a half twist out again, but this time in the tuck position. That's the first time we've seen it today and possibly the only time we will see it today because it is so unbelievably tricky to get twist out of a tuck shape. A man who is an undergraduate in law of Kindai University. So even after he's retired, he's going to spend uh, the rest of his life standing in front of judges. <laughs> Love your puns. <laughs> Someone's got to. I'm just jealous, I don't have any. <laughs> have you got a World Championship medal? <laughs> that wins. Michel say is in second place, 60.64. Same difficulty as Wangzi Sai. That is so close at the top of the table. Look at the gap, four hundreds between Wangzi Sai and Nishio Kuryusei. He actually had 
better time of flight than Wong, but his horizontal displacement and execution not quite as good. Now that was Great Britain, Zach Zamanos. Zach Pazamanos of Great Britain, the fifth strongest performer in qualification and the reigning British champion. Won his first title in this arena. display so clean backed himself to put together five triple somersaults at the beginning in a row you only do that if you know you can exit with enough time to plan the next skill also the first time we've seen a full in trip pike so that's a full twist in the first somersault followed by a pike uh, front somersault followed by a pike front somersault with a half twist it is so complex he says that he prefers that than the one that twists at the end because that just suits him. Gymnasts can choose. No other gymnast has put that skill together. It's worth the same as the other one, so it's up to the gym gymnast to choose if they want to use it. To think that all of this began because his sister wanted to go to trampolining but didn't want to go alone, so he came along with her. down into fourth. Still, Wang Zisai leads. Don't know if he even noticed. <laughs> Sitting there on his phone, totally unaware. Love it. Yan Langyu of the People's Republic of China, 24. China, and the world yeah. champion from two years ago in Baku, Azerbaijan. But last year, he was 18th at the second stage of qualification after being the top performer in the first round. So relief for him that he actually made it into this final. He's just won the Asian Games gold medal, so he's been in very good form. I think it's safe to say that a lot of gymnasts would not have got beyond the early stages of that routine. His ability to right himself, drawing the applause of the gymnasts of the world. The height is just phenomenal. He had the highest time of flight in qualification. The in jumps alone, I mean, I love trampoline, but I'm kind of nervous at that height. It's so high. When you're up that high, the trampoline looks really small. I imagine I've not been that high, but he is able to maintain height, even with a mistake, he's still able to maintain everything he needs to be able to get the tight shapes and show the judges what he needs to to get the high scores in execution. No gymnast can rely on just one element, they have to put it all together. So yes, he's got the highest time of flight, but he's also working hard to make sure he's got the difficulty the horizontal displacement and the execution. We talk about peaking at the right time in this sport. He's had to be at peak level for quite a while because he was desperate to win the Asian Games title at home. For years he was looking towards that. He managed to do it. He's kept the level high coming here. And he now leads 60.69. That is so, so close. Just ahead of Wang Zisai with Nishioka Rusei in the bronze medal position. 
So Jan is guaranteed a medal. Gabriel Albuquerque from Portugal. One of two 17-year-olds in Next this final. Portugal, he won the World Age Group competition last year, the Junior World Championship title. Now he's at his first Senior World Championships. He looked wonderful in qualification. He did come off in the team final. We wish him good fortune after what has been a bit of a tricky spell in some of the finals. to see from Gabriel Albuquerque and we get a glimpse here of just how good he is going to be. Loved watching this, such control, such tight shapes, early exits, slightly lower difficulty but backs it up with the control and other scores. Hugely difficult, one and a half twists out of the triple front. Tight shapes, which is what the judges are looking to see. And early line out, so he can watch down and then press his legs to get that height so he can pull into the next shape. And there, despite it being a tucked skill, he still needs to press his legs straight first. And that's so tricky to do because you're thinking it's a tuck skill, but you need to get that jump correct. So it's very fine margins in terms of timing. Sixty point zero two. Fourth place, well done to him. We'll see a lot more of Gabriel Albuquerque. So Jan Langyu is guaranteed to win at least a silver medal. There's one to go. His teammate Wang Zi Sai is also going to win at least a bronze. There will be a Japanese gymnast on the podium. It will either be Ishioka Ryusei or Sakai Ryosuke. Watch out for the twists in this one. The 26-year-old competing at his fifth World Championships. Yet to win individual honours, but he has been a team medalist on two occasions. It's only his second individual final. He was fifth at home in Tokyo in 2019. He's been a serial semi-finalist. It's great to see him get into the big one. Gave it everything he had. He really gave it everything he had. Sakai Ryosuke. A fighting performance, Pete. He did. It's such a tricky routine. Putting in that Miller, that's a triple twisting double back in the middle of the routine, means you spend so much of that skill, what we say blind, you can't spot anything. You're wrapping fast and you just have to trust yourself that at the end of the skill, you will be in the right place to plan your landing. Such a strong start with a triff root in the half in triff. Great third triple there. And then there, full, full pike. So double twisting, double back. Straight back into another triple. And then here, wrapping the miller. There's just nothing you can do once you've taken off and your trajectory is in the wrong place. Unless you can change the laws of physics, that's it.
46.14 for Sakaryoske. No change to the leaderboard. It means that the champion of the world is Jan Lanyu. The second time he's done it, and he wins just ahead of his own teammate Wang Zisai with Nishio Kuryuse taking the bronze medal. China one and two in the men's individual trampoline competition. And well done also to young Gabriel Albuquerque, the 17-year-old who finished in fourth position. The flag will fly high for the People's Republic of China. Yan and Wang. First and second in the men's final. Brilliant display from those two. It's so impressive that Yan has managed to do that after winning the Asian Games title, a home Asian Games title. The final standings in the men's individual trampoline competition, the bronze medal won by Nishio Kuryuse of Japan, silver to teenager Wang Zisai of the People's Republic of China, and his teammate Yan Langyu just about winning it for his second individual world gold. Let's have a look back at the best moments of the men's individual final. We have four scenes of celebration to come your way. So hold on, if you will, for the medal ceremonies for the synchronised and individual events at Birmingham 2023.
FIG World Trampoline Championships 2023 Award Ceremony for the Synchronized Trampoline Women's Final. The victory ceremony for the Women's Synchronized Trampoline Competition at the World Championships in Birmingham. Presented by Tetiana Shushka, FIG Technical Committee Member. 
The bronze medals are presented by Andy Toombs, the British Gymnastics Executive Director of Sport. In third place, winners of the bronze medal, representing Great Britain, Izzy Songhurst and Bryony Page. Bronze medalists in a home championships and first synchronised honours for these hugely decorated in gymnasts. Place, winners Izzy of the Songhurst and Bryony Page of Great Britain. Representing the People's Republic of China, Zengui and Pianin Lin. The People's Republic of China winning this silver medal Chu Zheng and Lin Chan Chi. And in first place, winners of the gold medal and world champions representing the United States of America, Nicole Asinger and Sarah Webster. The form synchronized partnership in World Cup competition has converted it into world championship form and they've won the title. The USA's Nicole Asinger and Sarah Webster. And we'll have the national anthem of the United USA. States of America. medalists in the women's synchronised trampoline competition of the Birmingham 2023 World Championships. Birmingham, let's make some noise for our World Championship medalists. FIG World Trampoline Championships 2023 award ceremony for the synchronized trampoline and final. It's now time for the victory ceremony for the men's synchronized trampoline competition at the Birmingham 2023 World Championships of Trampoline Gymnastics.
The gold medals are presented by Christoph Lambert, FIG Technical Committee President. The silver medals are presented by Miguel Vicente Marino, FIG Technical Committee Member. The bronze medals are presented by Andy Toombs, British Gymnastics Executive Director of Sports. In third place, and winners of the bronze medal, representing France, Pierre Guzou and Morgan Di Mario Odorio. The French winners of the bronze medal, Pierre Guzou and Morgan Demiro or Domiro. Great accomplishment for them. Representing the United States of America, Ruben Padilla and Aleski Shostak. United States of America winning the silver medal with Ruben Padilla once again on a world championship podium here in Birmingham, joined by Alexei Shostak. And in first place, winners of the gold medal and world champions representing Germany, K.O. Luxterman and Fabian Vogel. How impressive this is. K.O. Luxterman teaming with Fabian Vogel to take the world championship title. Vogel doing it two years in a row with different synchronized partners. The young man, the Lausterman, belonging on the highest stage of all. He's proven that with a great display here. It must be very tough to come in alongside somebody who is one half of the reigning world champions. If he felt pressure, he did not show it. medalists in the men's synchronized trampoline competition.
the FIG World Trampoline Championships 2023 award ceremony for the Trampoline Women's Final. The award ceremony for the Women's Trampoline Competition. can barely believe it. The gold medals are presented by Catherine Short, FIG Trampoline Ambassador. The silver medals are presented by Mariella Stoicheva, FIG Technical Committee Member. And the bronze medals are presented by Katie Brazier, Head of Major Sports Events Delivery, Birmingham City Council. In third place, the winner of the bronze medal, representing the United States of America, Jessica Stevens. Jessica Stevens of the United States of America, the Pan American Games champion. She's the bronze medalist at the World the Championships. Medal, representing the People's Republic of China, Su Ying Zhu. Zhu Shui Ying of the People's Republic of China, the Olympic champion, winning the silver medal. The second time that she has accomplished that. And in first place, winner of the gold medal and world champion, representing Great Britain, Bryony Page. Going to Paris as the reigning world champion, Bryony Page of Great Britain. The two-time Olympic medalist has just become a two-time individual world champion with extraordinary difficulty displayed on the trampoline bed and having overcome extraordinary difficulty en route. medalists in the women's trampoline competition at Birmingham 2023. It absolutely is the spiritual home, this place, for the British trampoline gymnasts. For our world championship medalists. To win a world title, so special, but to do it here, to do it at Arena Birmingham, it adds something extra, something undefinable.
the FIG World Trampoline Championships 2023 award ceremony for the Trampoline Men's Final. The victory ceremony for the men's trampoline the competition of Birmingham 2023. The gold medals are presented by Christoph Lambert, FIG Technical Committee President. The silver medals are presented by Tan Lau, FIG Technical Committee Member. The bronze medals are presented by Katie Brazier, Head of Major Sport Delivery for Birmingham City Council. In third place, and winner of the bronze medal, representing Japan, Ryusei Nishioka. Bronze medalist Nishioka Ryusei of Japan. Back on the individual In podium, place, and winner two of the years medal, down the road. Representing People's Republic of China, Zizei Wang. Wang Zizei, a new name. A first-year senior and a silver and medalist. Third place winner of the gold medal and world champion, representing People's Republic of China, Lang Yu Yan. It's the second time that Yan Lang Yu has been the individual world champion. What a wonderful performance and what a special autumn it's been for him, winning the Asian Games title and then coming here to win the world title. Have the national anthem of the People's Those Republic of China. Now stand with the national anthem of People's Republic of China. medalists in the men's trampoline competition at Birmingham 2023. Birmingham, please give it up for our World Championship medalists. Well, they're just racking up the horizontal displacement marks on this podium. Well, that's the only time that those three have looked slightly unsure of their positioning today. The medalists in the men's trampoline competition. One more order of business remains, and it's going to be a showstopper. The all-around final for the teams is the last event. It gets under, underway even in around about 20 minutes' time in Birmingham. So you have a moment to catch your breath, because you'll need it once the team all-around final gets started. It doesn't stop until we've crowned a world champion. See you soon.
and uh, all the uh, excitement over the last few hours. We haven't got long until we march in for our next competition, and that is going to be in about 15 minutes' time. So make sure you're back in your seats for 3 o'clock. But I would advise now would be a great time to stretch your legs, go and get yourself a bit fresh air, hot drink, whatever you need, and make sure you're back for the action by 3 o'clock.
Well, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you've had a nice, relaxing, what, seven-minute break. It's jam-packed. It's certainly packing everything into the schedule, and it's about to get even busier here. This is a really exciting afternoon to come up, isn't it? It is, and we've got a fantastic all-around team final to look forward to now with all of our gymnasts. Each discipline will be performing one more routine, and those scores will be collated to determine the all-around team champion. So, yes, this is very exciting. Yeah, all I know is it's going to be very different to what we've seen so far in the way that it runs. And so hopefully uh, we'll be able to guide you through what's happening at what times and when as well. So that's what's coming up in, well, I think it's about 10 minutes or so from now. If that, we'll be bringing out the gymnast and getting things rolling once again. We'll try and do the fan cam as well if we can. We'll try and do the AI images and maybe even the bongo cam might come out and get the dust off it as well. So all those things to come your way. Uh, these events take so long to plan. I mean, the meetings for this were started years ago and it builds up months, weeks, and then into the days as well. But it couldn't be possible without some of the lovely companies that we work with along the way. And one of those, some of you might have even flown into this place if you come from out of this country, is of course Birmingham Airport. Thank you, Birmingham Airport. Take a look at this. It's time to give away some lovely Birmingham Airport t-shirts. If you want a Birmingham Airport t-shirt, and why wouldn't you want to look like you work at Birmingham Airport? I want to hear you make some noise. There we go, we've got one. We're going to work our way around. We're going to get to that side as well. Don't worry, we've got to move forward and get along here. Again, Jamie reacts really well to movement. Here we are, I love it. There's a dad there that doesn't want the t-shirt, but his daughter does, and he's like, I'll stand up, then I'll try and get it. Here we go. There, it's a good shot, it's a good shot, it works! Yes! Great shot, Jamie. Well, let's move on down here again. I haven't got the t-shirt, she's got to say please to her. Move your arms around a lot, she'll do it. We can be bribed, if you've got any snacks and chocolate, we don't get out much, so... Feel free to wipe those over there. Oh, that one's gone, that guy doesn't even know he's there. Quick, go and get it, little girl, go and get it. Yes, 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 she stole it, brilliant. All right, Jamie, look, these lot down here, they need some as well. We're coming down. Jamie, they're in kind of a bit of a weird shape on this side. Not the people, I mean, this, this, the arena. Gotta be careful I say that. So, pick well, try not to get the expensive camera or the cameraman. Where did that go? It sounded like it made a big old, oof, good catch. All right, we've got a few more. See the Sweden flag up there? All right, this side of the middle, before you shoot, Jamie, we're gonna make them work for it. If you want a T-shirt, say Birmingham Airport! It's a phrase I never thought I'd use, but there we go. All right, let's move on around to this side as well. This time, I want you to shout the phrase, Departure Lounge! Good OK, on. let's go around. There's a few more in there. How many have got more up in there, Danny? How many have we got right there? We've got three more plus this one. We've got four more to go from this end all the way down to the bottom end. Are we ready? Go on, then. Give us a scream. All right, before you fire this one, this section in the middle, I'm really getting the Birmingham Airport references. When I say Birmingham, you say airport. Ready? Birmingham! Birmingham! Oh, yeah. There you go, Jamie. Fire wherever you want. We've got 30 more seconds to fire as many of these as we can. We've got a two left in my calculations, all right? Last one. We could throw the tote back, though, couldn't we? All right. We've got a, quite a big section to hit, so you're going to have to really earn it. If you want a Birmingham Airport T-shirt, let me hear you scream! Here he goes. Oh, wow, that's a good shot. Who's he going to get? Don't... Yes, good catch. Don't fight over it. OK, good effort. Very good effort indeed. We'll try and give some more of those a little bit later on, but we are now just minutes away. And I'll ask you one more question. I've asked it lots, but I'll ask it again. Birmingham, are you ready?
Birmingham, we are 90 seconds away from the gymnasts following where I've just come from, down onto the stage and then onto the arena floor for more action coming your way. We've had one gold medal for Team GB. Give me a scream if you want another one, home crowd. And there's all sorts going on as well. Plenty of countries, plenty of medals to be awarded. We're going to get things started off. We have got one minute to go. So we're going to get a Mexican wave to really rock this arena. We're going to start here. The people in this section here, you're going to start things off. When you go people around, I don't want it silent. I want to woo. Are you ready? On the count of three, start the Mexican wave. One, two, three, go. Keep it going. Keep the woos going. Nice and loud. Make some noise. It's coming around the backside there. Welcome to Birmingham 2023 and the team all around final, the last event to take place at the Trampoline Gymnastics World Championships. Only the finest and broadest of squads can make it through to this event. These are the five nations who have made it through to the team all around final at Birmingham 2023. The action comes quick and the scores can be very, very tight. the teams Please that have made it the through. Team from Canada. These are just the gymnasts involved in the first of three rounds of competition. Australia. We'll go through the format in just a moment after we have a look at the contenders. Portugal. The United States of America. The silver medalist from last year. The United States of America. And let's hear you make some noise for Great Britain! And here are the reigning team all around world champions, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, the top performers in qualification at home in Birmingham. Team final. Every single part of these World Championships now comes into play at the same time. <laughs> Truly an all-around spectacle, this, and great fun. Gymnasts who have had a busy championships getting ready for one last performance. No warm-ups in this competition. They have to get straight out there and get on with it. We're going to see the trampoline, the full-size trampoline in play. We 
We're also going to see the double mini trampoline and the tumbling track. And I will go through all of the rooms in just a moment. From the all around team final, Birmingham, are you ready? So we have five teams in this final. Who's supported Team Canada? Who's here for Team Australia? The Canadians, the fifth best team in qualification. Canada. We also have Australia, the and fourth TGB. best in qualifying. Portugal, the third best. USA, the second best in Great Britain, the top qualifiers. The format of this competition is quite simple. Every single category of trampoline gymnastics, that is synchro, Individual, double mini trampoline and tumbling takes place for men and women. Eight events in all, and you've got to win your event to get five points. Eight times five equals 40. That's the maximum you can get. If you get that 40 points, you have won the world title. It tends to be a lot closer than that. This is the start. It is Sophie-Anne Meto of Canada. No warm-up, so the athletes are straight into competition. Good start from Sophie-Anne Meto. The Canadians were medalists the first time this event was held in 2018. Going on very first is so difficult. When the absolute first gymnast out there in front of all these people, knowing that what you do can count for your country in a team event that spans all the disciplines. And it helps to have somebody like her, doesn't it? Like Sophie Ann Meto, who's so reliable. Exactly. So the country can choose which gymnast will compete. Typically, it'll be based on how well they did in the previous rounds, but it's up to them. We bring the scores later on in the competition to rather add to the drama. It's all good fun. So in this first round, women's trampoline, women's tumbling and men's double mini trampoline, but you are going to see all eight different categories. Special moment this for 17-year-old Claire Jackson from Calgary. It's her senior world championship debut. She represents her nation in this team all around final in the women's tumbling. Well done, Claire Jackson, that's excellent. Her first ever world championship final. A great start. So a reminder, they, the gymnasts did not get to use the equipment beforehand. So they would have warmed up out the back on different equipment, but that can feel so different with the lights and the sounds and everything's just slightly different. So being able to just run at a track without touching it today is so tricky. Electing for one double, that's just in the dismount there, it's a double back in the straight position. If you guys make your way back to the team. Okay, now we go back. Okay. Right. Now to the men's double mini trampoline. Gavin Dodd, somebody who knows how to get onto the podium in an individual capacity in this event. The 20 year old from British Columbia. Great performer. The Canadians have started well. They've started pretty securely across the first three categories. So that's round one done for the Canadians. There are three rounds in all. 
We spread out the eight different categories across those three rounds. Let's have a look back. So impressive, because this trip, this triple front with a half twist, normally has straight legs as he kicks out, but he didn't have it there. But rather than worry, he just maintained composure and pressed down into the dismount skill. Big difficulty, two triple somersaults. Now we're going to bring you some scores. 53.94 for Sofiane Meto. For Claire Jackson, 22.7. Twenty seven point eight for Gavin Dodd. For which, like, oh. Now those scores will only really acquire meaning once we've gone through this round. At the moment the Canadians are going to pick up all of the five points available, but that's because no one else has competed, so we now see if the Australians can beat them. This is Abby Watts of Australia, women's trampoline now for the fourth best performers in qualification. The 26-year-old, very experienced. This is her fourth World Championships. Oh, that looks really, really painful there. And what a relief to see her straight away get back up to her feet, Abby Watts. That's a really awkward landing. Such a shame, as that routine was really looking flawless. So much control, tight shapes, early line outs, great posture. And then this is how cruel the sport can be. It only takes that tiny slip and you travel backwards. Unfortunately, there is just that tiny space between the trampoline and the end deck mat there. Regrettably, Abby Watts having to be helped off the competition floor. We hope that she's OK. And it's just a precautionary move. And then to Australia, Rene Couchy. Brie Couchy, the World Games bronze medalist. The 18-year-old on the tumbling track. She really impressed at the World Games in the other Birmingham, Birmingham, Alabama last year. And now at the city which gave its name to the city in the deep south of the USA. She's performed well too. Electing to put another double in the pass, which attracts an extra bonus point of difficulty. So this double here is tricky because you've got to get that link into the whip correct. If you've missed that time that at all, it makes the remainder of the pass very, very difficult. Come on, Troy, you got this, mate. Hey, nice one. Crush it. Come on, Troy. Let's go, Troy. Troy Sikowski of Australia. Men's double mini trampoline, the 18-year-old from New South Wales. He's a little off for access. He will take about 1.2 a penalty there by the looks of things. <laughs> We've got the Australian delegation right next to us and they are supporting their team wonderfully. Elected for a very impressive twisting pass. That's two and a half twists in the first skill. 
followed by three twists in the second skill. There's a great symmetry to this pass, known as a full Rudy Miller. So there, just as the bed presses down, the shoulders move slightly. As you prepare to create twist, you have to get the timing so right. So stand up straight and then twist. Canada and Australia agree now. Team Portugal. That completes the Australians' first round. Let's have a look at their numbers. 38.13 for Abby Watt. So the Canadians up compared to the Australians there. Brie Couchy, 24.5. So that's better for the Australians than the Canadians. Difficulties really paid off on that. Eight, eight, excuse me. That's right. That's right. That's right. Should I get eight, eight? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you got nine, nine, five point eight for <laughs> Troy Sikowski. Second place for the Australians there. So a slightly mixed bag for Australia in that first round. <laughs> Sofia Correa of Portugal. Now we go to the third strongest qualifiers and we begin with the 22-year-old who was part of the squad that won the all-around bronze medal last year. an undergraduate at uh, medical school, Sofia Correa, in Lisbon. And she started securely for her squad. It really is impressive to hold the nerve with an impressive start with a triple front somersault and then another triple somersault in the tuck position, using a single somersault to help retain control, but then continuing with very complex elements, a twist in the double somersaults. We now head to the Portuguese on the tumbling track. This is round one of three. Mariana Cascalheira. 19 from Setubal. This is her senior world championship debut, but she was a silver medalist in the world age group competition to the junior world championships several years ago. Oh, she's unfortunately lost all of her momentum. I hope that she's okay. So regrettably not able to make it all the way to the landing mat, but at least she's walking away looking okay. I wondered if she just jarred something there. The pressures on the body are so hard. Hopefully she's okay. Electing for huge difficulty. So because this is a double back straight with a full twist as well, it gets massive difficulty. But the link into transition is so difficult. It's well to continue because the judges should still, well, it's up to the judges, but it looks like they'll score it out of eight, which still gives a higher score than it might have done otherwise. And that could well be crucial in an event where it's not about the total score that you get unless we get to a tie-break situation. It is about the number of points it converts to per round. It's where it's so different because often you're trying to beat so many people, but here, just four. Thiago Sampao on the double mini trampoline. Very reliable and exciting performer on this apparatus. He's competed at five world championships now. That's good. Just point two when it comes to penalties there for Thiago Sampao. 
That could be really useful for the Portuguese cause. We're going to bring you the scores in just a moment or two. But first of all, let's have a look back. Electing for huge difficulty again, starting with a triple front with a half twist, known as a trif tuck, followed by a very similar skill, which is essentially the same skill again, but with a half twist at the beginning. So that'd be a 10.8 difficulty. The equal highest we've seen so far. Scores. Sofia Correa in the middle there on the trampoline, 52.49. Second best so far. Mariana Cascaliera, 20.6. That is the third of the three teams. But this will do well. No surprise, that's the best. 29 for Thiago Sampal. So the Portuguese there were first, second and third of the three across those three categories. That's made for a very interesting picture as we go to the second best team from qualification. What a super competition she's having. Jessica Stevens of the United States of America, bronze medalist in the individual event. She could do very well here for the USA. She's just so dependable, isn't she, Jess Stevens? And to do that with no warm-up right after you've won the individual bronze medal, I mean, that takes... It really does. I'm absolutely amazed. So it was a really, really strong start with the Trift Pikes. It's a triple front with a half twist out, holding the line. And this is the first time you've been on this equipment since your warm-up. Tight shape again. Getting an early kick out to see. Next up, Team USA, Mia Bruns. Mia Bruns of the United States of America takes to the tumbling track. The silver medalist at last year's World Games in Birmingham, Alabama. Very good. She is such a strong lander. Looks always in control. Absolutely massive. Huge difficulty. Fast, clean, good execution. And the big landing as well, big dismount as well. So taking the, not necessarily risk, because I'm sure she knows she can do it, but that double back straight in the middle, that transition, connecting it into the whips. And again, another double back straight, but this time with a full twist to get even more difficulty packed in there. There is almost a cast iron guarantee for the USA of a five point haul. It comes from the unbeatable one, Ruben Padilla, on the double mini trampoline. Delightful. Delightful from Ruben Padilla. That's going to be very difficult to go beyond in terms of the maximum five points. That could be in the bag for the US. Combining phenomenal difficulty with phenomenal execution. It's 
just another world. I think he just said, I'm going to have a rest now. <laughs> I think he's earned it. So he goes with a triple front half twist in the mount, but even harder, even more impressive is that dismount. So this alone is one of the hardest skills in double mini trampoline. But here, he's now got to press in a straight position to get the full twist, finish the full twist, then he can pull the pike round to finish the second and the third somersault. It's just remarkable height that he gets. He has almost every skill in his locker. He could choose almost any skill and probably still push for first place. Let's have a look at these numbers for the United States of America. 52.44 for Jess Stevens. That's the third best that we've seen. Now, that's a good one for the US, 26.1. For Mia Brun, so she's guaranteed at least four points for the US in that round. And Ruben Padilla is guaranteed at least four points for the USA and will probably, with that 29.9, get five. So no one in the world gets 30 in DMT except for Ruben. So as a joke, he's just got 29.9 then, almost looks disappointed. Yes, but no one else right. can score 30. <laughs> to the top performers in qualification and the reigning champions of the world. This is Bryony Page of Great Britain, and she is the individual two-time reigning world champion. So Bryony has to choose a routine that she thinks can beat the four other gymnasts. She doesn't have to go harder than that. performance from Bryony Page. What a championship from her. Believe it or not, that's not her very, very best, but it's still incredible, especially under those nerves. Now that she knows she's an individual world champion for the second time, she did so well to fight with it. Yeah, despite how good it looked, she looks a little disappointed, which is really unfair because it was still incredible. She just loses a little bit of height relative to her normal standard and then just has to start fighting it a little bit. But still has the tight shapes, which is what the judges are looking for. Janice Davidson now takes to the tumbling track. Part of the team that won gold, she could score very highly. <laughs> performs that well, performs that really well. Shanice Davidson, so far a good competition for the British athletes. Very clean. Also electing for the double in the middle of the pass. This is where it can be so tricky. You're new to the track after, without that first touch of warm-up. And there, got to get the transition correct to keep the momentum, that horizontal momentum, to then convert it into vertical momentum, going as high as you can. She's a gymnast who has endured dreadful injury problems in her career, her toughness in rehabilitating, her determination is a lesson to everyone. And this is the last performance of round number one, round one of three. Lewis Gosling of Great Britain, the 20 year old from Willing Garden City. And he was part of the team that won the all-around gold medal last year. That's a very successful round for Great Britain. Very successful indeed. And well done 
to young Lewis Gosling, who looks pleased as punch with that. That is such a big moment. He made a very uncharacteristic mistake this time last year in the all-around competition, which was such an unfortunate shot, but he's managed to push through and get it right this time. He's been waiting a year for that, hasn't he? Exactly. Finishes a twist so early that he has time to prepare for the dismount. So he's gone with a 10 difficulty based on the four somersaults, two doubles, and the five and a half twists. He is picking up 0.6 by the looks of things based on that landing in terms of penalties. <laughs> but he doesn't care at all. Now, where will Great Britain, the world champions from last year, be placed after this round is done? Four points for them for the trampoline component for women, 53.57. Likewise for Shanice Davidson, 25.8, just below Mia Bruns. And three points for Lewis Gosling, that's a good start for the British team. And that brings us to the end of the first round. United States of America leading the way. For the next group to come out. Great first round for them. So this is how it looks at the moment. The United States of America are leading the way. Best for them, the women's tumbling and the double mini trampoline. Maximum points there, only two points on the double mini trampoline. Great Britain solid across the board, Canada spectacular in terms of their five-point haul on the women's trampoline for Sofiane Meto and the Portuguese are, along with the Australians, out of medal contention at the moment, but it all could change. We go into the second round, and the order now changes based on the positions after the previous round. So Australia now start, then Portugal, then Canada, then Great Britain, then the United States of America. We now move in this next stage of the competition to men's individual trampoline, men's individual tumbling, and women's double mini trampoline. Any moment now, the gymnast will appear. We'll see the squad selection that's been made for the second round. If you're just joining the action now, this is the all-around competition for teams at the World Championships of Trampoline Gymnastics. images earlier. We did warn you, if you send us your photos, your selfies, then we may do a whole load of weird things with them with the AI machine. We saw a few of them earlier, and hopefully we're going to see a few more on the big screen as well. Uh, whether we'll get a chance to get any more sent in, I'm not sure, but if I get the nod, I will, of course, let you know. We're going to put some of those on in just a moment. And in between, what we see here, we'll try and get some fan cam, maybe even the bongo cam as well. We try and do as much as we can do possibly uh, to keep you entertained in between. Um, not that you need it. It's been a fantastic start to this all-around team final. There's plenty more of that to come in the moment as well. But fingers crossed we'll get some AI images on the big screen. While the AI user works its magic, we're going to get them shown in the next round so we have more time for it. If you didn't do it earlier, now's a chance to do it. This is for the AI images. Scan that QR code. Scan the QR code on your phone. It will take you to a website. It will ask you to take a selfie. And then we will turn it into something magical with the AI machine. So make sure you scan that. It's only going to be on the screen for a few more seconds. Go to the website to take your selfie. But bear in mind, you can do whatever you want to do with it. I think within reason. All right, it's time to welcome the gymnasts.
We now move to round number two. Please welcome the team of Canada. United States of America are currently leading by a single point. Make some noise for Team Australia. The Canadians bring in their squad for this second round along with the Australians. We're going to see Let's hear it for Team Portugal. A great opportunity now for the men's trampolinists, the men's tumblers and the women's double mini trampolinists. Make some noise for the USA. And I want to hear you The leaders, the United Britain. States of America. Great Britain currently in second place, but only by a single point. Let's hear it again, the all-around team final! As the lights come back on in the arena, let us attempt to provide you some illumination as to how things are looking in this team all around competition. At the moment, the United States of America lead on 12 points, Great Britain second on 11 points, Canada third on nine points, Portugal fourth on eight points, and Australia fifth on five points. It is very tight at the moment and hard to tell what's going to happen. We move now to the men's trampoline and men's tumbling and the women's double mini trampoline. So we've just reversed everything in terms of gender from the first round. The last round will be the two synchronised trampoline performances. That will take us to the eight different categories completed. And just to remind you, five points available per category. So a maximum, therefore, of 40 points is available. The USA doing very well when you think they took 12 points in that first round out of a maximum of 15. That was really strong. Just using the trampoline there, just to try and orientate himself a little bit. Within the rules, just little jumps like that, because this equipment is new to you out the front. They, they might look the same piece of equipment, they are subtly different. Blake Rutherford competing for Australia. not nice at all for poor Blake Rutherford. He's going to get some assessment now from the coaches and medical staff. It was such a strong start, choosing for what we call the half-in Randy out. So it's a half twist, pike front, and then a two and a half twist. He is one of the best twisters in the world. And then 
this is where the sport is so difficult. The second you've lost where you are, you just have to wait. Well, there's warm applause because he's being helped away on his feet, which is a good sign. Next one, Australia, Ethan McGuinness. To Ethan McGuinness in the men's tumbling. World champion from last year. Really did have a lot of power in that performance. Ethan McGuinness aiming to pick up a big haul for the Australians here. This is very impressive. So he goes for his first double. And normally you're trying to get the transition without necessarily putting your hands down. Putting your hands down means you're at a very precise angle where you're at risk of your arms pressing too hard into the track. And then finishing with a triple twisting double back in the top position. One of my all time favorite skills. A lot of emotion after making a mistake in the individual competition. One more performance for the Australians in the second of three rounds. Team Australia, Thomas. 27-year-old Breda Thomas. Part of the team that won the women's double mini trampoline title last year. Very secure landing, that was lovely from Breda Thomas. She's had some good World Cup results this season, getting on the podium in Santarém in Portugal. electing for a clean pass. When you're running at the double mini trampoline and you haven't been ha had the opportunity to warm up on it, there's such jeopardy in knowing exactly how it'll rebound as the equipment out the back might feel different. So electing for the relatively simple half up pikes, that's this skill here, which doesn't have any extra twists, but gives her the opportunity to push into that huge double back straight with a full twist. Twisting in double backs adds more difficulty The other gymnasts will be watching this, trying to decide whether they want to change their difficulty based on what they're seeing. The scores will now come in. Thirty-five point eight one for Blake Rutherford. Ethan McGuinness scores twenty-nine point one. And it's some water. And Breda Thomas twenty-five point two. So those are the numbers. But everyone else now has to try and beat. The Portuguese putting up real experience in Diogo Abroio on the men's trampoline. The 30 year old who's competed at two Olympic Games. really gone for one of their absolute veterans here. Somebody who knows this format well. He's been on the podium in the team all around event before.
steal from one of the veterans, Jogo Abreu of Portugal. It really helps, doesn't it, Pete? Having somebody who knows this sort of competition format. That experience has made such a difference there. There's so much pressure. You might have heard that noise. So that's where his foot was very near the spring. So you've got all these springs under the blue frame pad. And if you land near it, it'll just make a ping noise and it can be quite alarming. But you've got to trust that even though you're near the edge of the trampoline, if you press down and treat it the same, it will push you back up in the right direction. Electing for simpler difficulty in that final skill. Normally that's a Miller, but he's gone with a double twisting rather than triple twisting skill. Vasco Peso, 21 at his fourth World Championships. He produced last year Portugal's highest ever finish in men's tumbling at the European Championships. Gosh, he really did get some height, didn't he? Coming up to the landing mat, that was stunning. Phenomenal, so high. His pipe speed, his rotation wasn't quite as fast as he might have liked, but he managed to pull it so deep that he got round in time. The judges might be looking at the shape. The judges, the shape awarded, the difficulty is awarded on shape, and the shape is awarded on the lowest, or what's considered the easiest shape throughout the skill. So in a triple back pike, for example, if the first somersault is piked, the second somersault is piked, the third somersault is tucked, well, anywhere really, but if it's tucked at all, so there it should be straight enough, but there it's starting to pull the knees round because the smaller you are, the faster you rotate. So it's amazing spatial awareness to know he needs to speed up. And he doesn't, he hasn't used the triple tuck in any other thing because you only compete once. So it's okay, relatively speaking, to get downgraded to just triple tuck. Diana Gago, the last performer for the Portuguese in this, the second round. She was part of their squad that won the all-around bronze medal last year. Well done from Diana Gago of Portugal. They weren't in the best of positions at the conclusion of the first round. Fourth place. Can they push back up towards the podium now? Absolutely huge. So the previous difficulty we saw was 6.4. This is 8.4. Because it's in a straight position, so it's a straight double front with a one and a half twist, a, a double twisting, double back straight, landing in the box. That will be one of the very, very highest scores in women's DMT. In come Portugal's scores. Fifty-eight point six six. Healthy number is expected for Jogo Abroi. Vasco Peso, twenty-eight point one. That's the second best so far. The 27.2, Diana Gago is leading the way. We have quite some way to go in this round. We now head to the top three after round one. There's the single time for Team Canada. On the trampoline, this is Keegan So. We're now with the Canadians who were in third position after the first round of the competition. We're looking at Keegan Sohn, the 31-year-old from Alberta. It's his 10th World Championships. He made his debut 
here in Birmingham in 2011. Welcome home, Keegan Sohn. trouble and he managed to uh, get out of that in as secure a fashion as possible but that is a problem for the Canadians in terms of the third place that they're currently occupying such a shame so great to watch his routines such a nice style tight shapes so here we've got the tight pike with a one and a half twist out spots it with enough time to prepare for the next element does have to make a slight adjustment there. Straight arms, and then there, that's it. As his foot, foot presses into the bed, suddenly there's that movement where the hips and the shoulders go backwards. It's so subtle, but that's all it takes. And here we go, on something from Canada, Jared Matthews. A young man from Canada. 17-year-old Jared Matthews from Belleville on the eastern end of Lake Ontario and he was the bronze medalist at the Junior World Championships last year. Well, he's, he's pulled up and can go no further. Again, it looks as though he's OK and that's all really one cares about at this stage. That is so much more important than any uh, position on a podium but it's a tough round this for the Canadians. This really shows how complex these passes are. Using the flick into the very clean full falls, that's the double twist and double back, and then there, that transition just goes slightly out of line. And the second that happens, the momentum's in the wrong place. Now we have the last performance from the Canadians in the second round. Zoe Fanouf. Zoe Fanouf of Canada. Women's double mini trampoline. She's been an individual medalist in this event. That will help the Canadian calls. Well done to Zoe Fanouf. They may find that they slip away from that bronze medal position, though, with one round to go. So, starting with a relatively low difficulty skill, which is the half out pike, that double front with a half twist. Hard to know if she was going for the double back straight or tuck with the double twist. So, here, the connection is critical. Wow. So, the feet. Her momentum, her center of mass was over the frame pad, and that is so difficult. Once your center of mass is in the incorrect place, it's so easy to put your foot on the frame pad, and that's the end of the pass. But by keeping her feet pressed tightly together, she's able to get them in the, get enough push into a dismount. She's very, very well out of that mount to be able to get a solid score. Be a very important score for the Canadians too. Let's see what the numbers are like here. 40.89 for Keegan So. Jared Matthews, 15.5. Zoe Fanov scored 24.5. We'll give you a sense of how it's all looking in just a moment or two. The team in second place approaching the second round. Andrew Stamp now of Great Britain, the host nation, on the trampoline. The Youth Olympic Games medalist 
part of the team that won the world all-around title last year. Contribution there to Great Britain's cause coming from 21 year old Andrew Stamp. That could be really important for the host nation. Incredible job to hold on. The difficulty is so high, there is so much going on because we've got a triple front somersault with a one and a half twist. We call that Triff Rudy. And there, as he's pressing to the bed, he just tips his shoulder slightly, which means he's traveling backwards off the trampoline, towards off the trampoline, but holds his nerve, stays strong, and is able to just carry on with the, with, with the routine as if nothing's gone wrong. What a special moment this is for the impressive young Fred Teague. He's only 17. From Hampshire, it's his senior world championship debut. He was the junior world championship runner-up last year. He is absolutely one to watch for the future. Oh, dear. I mean, he is such an exciting gymnast. Fred T, this teenager with extraordinary power. What a prospect, Pete. What a prospect. Absolutely huge, so difficult. He put out one of his hardest ever passes when it mattered. You really have to back yourself to put down something this difficult. You have to know you're going to put it together. You only get one shot. So he goes the double twist and double back, but gets the transition correct, which means he gets the row of whips, building speed, knowing that he's got a big triple back, triple back tuck coming. Has time to see the landing to get a pretty good end. That's calm work, isn't it? That's really <laughs> calm. Is. So Kirsty Way has some of the hardest skills in the whole world. Only woman who ever competed for Fulham Rudy. Two and a half to see double straight front. Kirsty Way of Great Britain. Another gymnast with the potential to really shake things up. Well, Kirsty Way completing the round for Great Britain. Demonstrating her experience there. She went with the huge mount, so that's a full in half out straight. So that's a one and a half to seen double straight front, but she wasn't happy with it. That wasn't the dismount she was planning, but rather than panic, she stayed calm and did a dismount. So here, not happy with the position, so elects for a simpler skill, but critically, that now means she gets a score out of two moves rather than one. That really shows quick thinking from the hugely experienced Kirsty Waite. get a sense of what that means now for Great Britain in terms of the scoring. That's very useful. 59.05 for the host nation. Andrew Stamp will win at least four points. Fred Teague, 27.1, well done to him. Currently in third place. For Kirsty Way, 24.1. Low level of difficulty by her standards, but importantly, it is something, and she's in fourth position. Will she hold on to that or will she uh, slip down? Time for Team 
USA. On the men's trampoline, Alexi Shostak. Now to the United States of America, the top performers after round one. This is Alexa Shostak. Delivering some real quality for the United States of America. Alexei Shostak, USA looking in very good order at the moment. Huge routine. Goes for the four triples, knows he's got some big scores to beat. So put it all out there. What boldness from the 28-year-old. <laughs> Electing to start with a very complex full in pike to so full twist pike front pike front with a half twist knowing that that's skill one and you've still got nine skills to stay in control for no surprise that they picked him Aidan Brown of the United States of America on the tumbling track. You would think that this is a very, very good bet for some big points for the American team. And it surely will be Caden Brown of the United States of America. He didn't seem to have the easiest of starts to that display, but he got there with massive power. It was a good recovery, and I think considering the situation he was in, he did very, very well. To so start off with a very clean double back straight with a full twist out, and then there, the legs just buckle slightly, getting that incorrect transition. But from there, he's strong enough, physically and mentally, to keep pushing into the double twisting double back. This is the last performance of the second round. Finally, our DMT from the USA, Shelby Nobuhara. Shelby Nobuhara of the United States of America. 19-year-old from Utah. The United States of America is going to be in a very good place going into the last round of the competition. They may well win this title, the title that they lost on a tie-break to the host nation this year, Great Britain, in Bulgaria at the 2022 World Championships. Well done to Shelby Nobuhara. What a, comp uh, what a contribution to her country, putting together a pass with complexity in the dismount, knowing that you haven't been on that equipment in this warm-up, knowing that you've actually had to wait the longest since the warm-up. You've had such a long time since your warm-up, such an opportunity to get cold or not peak at the right time. So electing for that half-out pike, but then the huge double-twisting, double-back straight. Now, how good will these numbers be for the United States of America? 
58.57 for Alexa Shostak, third place. So that means Great Britain has won that round. Peyton Brown, 25.6, the difficulty not huge. That is fourth place for the Americans. So we might be about to get a turnaround. 25.6, But that's yeah. gonna help hugely. Shelby Nobuhara, 25.6. So four points for the United States of America. Well done, Shelby Nobuhara. And it is going to be incredibly close going into this last round. The Portuguese are right back in the game now. Look at how things have changed for the Portuguese. They were in fourth position at the end of the last round, courtesy of an excellent second round, they have moved up into second place, level on points with the USA. The USA are now holding on because Great Britain are in third position on 20 points. So we have just a single point separating the top three teams. Now, it looks as though it's really three teams that are chasing for those medals with Australia and Canada, fourth and fifth. They cannot tie. It will, if necessary, go to a countback system where we look at the raw score across all of these performances. But we'll get to that if we need to. That means that now the order has changed for the last round. Canada. Australia, Great Britain, Portugal, and the United States of America. Just to remind you, one point separates all of the top three teams going into the last performance. It is going to be absolutely fascinating. It's the synchronized trampoline round next. And after all, nothing strange ever happens in synchronized trampolining. <laughs> this is great. Nobody can afford to play it safe. <laughs> and we'll bring you that final round in just a moment or two. competition. Just about on the countback system of raw score, but level on points with Portugal. Can the host nation go from third to winning the title with their synchronized trampoline performances? We're going to discover in just a moment or two.
to the last round then. The synchronized trampoline events. The very last round of competition in the team all-around event at the World Championships of Trampoline Gymnastics. Canada, this is the men's synchronized performance, the penultimate. After this, their women's synchronized team will take to the trampoline beds. It's okay that they take a moment to reset themselves and actually it gives us an opportunity to make clear exactly what is going on we have at the moment the united states of america leading ahead of portugal they're both level on 21 points great britain one point below them in third place it seems as though we really have now three of the five nations in the race for the medals with australia and canada on 14 points each It will be fascinating to see how this whole competition unfolds. And I'll bring you up to speed with the scoring process in just a moment after the Canadian men's synchronized display. One, two. And they're ready. And it's going to come to an end, unfortunately, for the Canadians. And that really is uh, most unfortunate. We have to remind ourselves, this is the last piece of activity for all of these gymnasts. Pete, they have been through a lot at these World Championships. Yeah, particularly Gavin. So Gavin competed in the double mini trampoline earlier, so he's been very busy. I think he's the only gymnast that's done that. The in-jumps, so that's the jumps before they started the routine, looked very... Oh, they, they, they looked a bit stressed. It looked very difficult to find their timing so this is the equipment that they've only just come out to they would have been warming up out the back but on different equipment and they just couldn't find their rhythm sadly the entire team now waiting go, for the scores to come in but they don't come in until after this performance Tam and Kalina Sohn performing the last routine for the Canadians in this team all around final. One, two. The Canadians in fifth place out of five coming into the last round. And that, unfortunately, for Canada, as the leg is. Uh, Quickly retrieved from that really unpleasant uh, junction in between the edge of the apparatus and the safety mat. That is two out of two synchronized routines that have not gone according to plan for the Canadians, but we're always happy in a situation like this where they're okay and they walk away from it with no real issues. Yeah, that was brother and sister there, the Sowens just uh, talking to each other. So the gap, it's quite a small gap, but it is unfortunately quite easy to find. The gap between the frame pad, that piece of blue protection there, and the springs, you can find it. If you get your foot under it, there we go, the foot just goes under. Typically, believe it or not, it doesn't actually hurt too much. It's one of those things, isn't it, Pete, that it looks far worse to people like me who are not trampoline gymnasts than it does to people like you who've had that happen to you many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> More often than I'd like to count. <laughs> so the numbers will now come in for the Canadians. Five points if you win your round. So five points as a maximum to be awarded in the men's synchronized category, five points as a maximum to be awarded in the women's synchronized category. One point 
the minimum score that you can get. And that's why it really is tight at the top at the moment with the USA and Portugal on 21 points and Great Britain on 20. And if we do go down to that tiebreaker, then we need to look at total scores. 18.81. And 18.95. <laughs> Not the strongest of rounds, unfortunately, for Canada as they conclude their competition. They were well positioned after the first round. They were in bronze medal uh, place, but it slipped away. To Australia, the fourth best team as we go into this last round. Their men's synchronised pair will be first to take to the apparatus. Quite a lot of horizontal displacement, but what a good hold. Well done to the Australians for getting through that and bringing to a close their World Championships. Those two now can sit back and wait for their teammates and know they've done a good job. Very solid. Sean has not long become a dad, so this is very special, knowing he's this far away from his family. So it might look like going long or short, so going to the sort of the length of the trampoline is worse, but actually it's what we call cast. So that is going side to side of the trampoline. That can be really where it's quite intimidating because the trampoline really does act different. Imogen Florian and Karina Haggerty for Australia in the women's synchronised routine. This is the last contribution from Australia to these World Championships. Good luck to them. Little loss uh, of position right at the end, but nonetheless, the Australians will finish above Canada. They will move into fourth place. And their two pairs uh, performed very well. Very solid, electing for a lower difficulty, so no triple somersaults. And we had a couple of single somersaults as well, so that's where they only rotate 360 degrees around their hips. And they know that they cannot push into the medals because they're on 14 points and Great Britain are on 20 points in bronze medal position so the gap is too large for them it's about finishing ahead of the Canadians and they knew they only needed to get 18 plus scores get close to 19 to do that yeah and as well getting that experience in front of a live audience at a world championships is just amazing so hard to get that experience otherwise No. <laughs> That's a blur. My glasses are over there somewhere. <laughs> My bad. Nice boys. 49.31 for Australia's men. Okay, Sean. 45.77 the score for the women. So the Australians will finish above Canada. Got 
now we go to the host nation. And it's time to hear you roll one more time, please, with Great Britain's Corey Walks and Zach Pizanos. We see Corey Walks and Zach Pizanos of Great Britain. A Great Britain in third place on 20 points coming into this very last display. And it was in the final round last year in Bulgaria where they snuck into the lead and took the title on a tie break. And that is a really crunching landing for Corey Walks. He looks OK. It is the score that will be problematic, but he is fine. He can smile about it at the end of what's been a really successful campaign for the British men and indeed the British women when it comes to the full-size trampoline. That was a real case of almost but not quite. It was. So obviously they have to agree their routine in advance because they can't communicate mid-routine. So they've agreed this routine, which is a two-triple start. And then later on the routine, they've agreed what's called a Rudy out pike. So that's a double front pike with a one and a half twist. And what happens is Zach on the right goes one and a half twist. Corey's obviously not happy with something, so doesn't wrap that twist and ends up down to the side. And there's just nothing you can do once your trajectory is out slightly. finish for the British team. Bryony Page and Izzy Songhurst. This is the last performance as Great Britain seeks to finish as high up the table as possible with a medal already secured. The colour is to be determined. What can they do? for the British team, courtesy of Izzy Songhurst and Bryony Page on what has been an extraordinary day and an extraordinary championships for these athletes. That shows phenomenal control. What had happened is Izzy had just made a very, very small mistake, which lost her a tiny bit of height, but Bryony was able to adjust to it whilst Izzy Songhurst worked so hard to make the correction as well and get back up to height. So here the synchronization is spot on, very high execution and control. And then when the height starts dropping, the synchro partner, so that's on the right, Bryony Page, has to now adjust. Because she's a bit higher, she has to not push the trampoline so hard in order to get the synchronicity right. And now they're back to synchronization. And that which you have articulated so well, Pete, is a split second decision, isn't it? It is. You've got to remember, you're looking out of the corner of your eye. You, you can't move your head. Heads are, because they're so heavy, they're really important to keep as neutral as possible throughout the skills. You can't afford to move the head at all, really. You'll notice Bryony Page there, for example, with a dead neutral head position. men's pair 31.29 for the women's pair 48.58 that could be extremely useful to Great Britain the best so far but we've got to wait now for Portugal and the United States of America before there's going to be any any clarity there's a lot still to untangle
For the Portuguese, it is the combination of Jogo Abroi and Pedro Ferreira in the men's synchronised component. Portugal in second place ahead of this last round. They've really turned it all around. Portuguese delegation watching on. They are hopeful of a mighty victory in Birmingham. That is phenomenal. They had the option to play it a bit safer and push, you know, accept the silver medal maybe, but they needed to, they wanted, they chose, sorry, to put down the best routine they possibly could. That's a three triple start. Going with high difficulty to make sure they give themselves the best shot of beating the Americans in a minute. They've won the silver before, that was in 2018. They won the bronze last time around in Sofia. They would be absolutely overjoyed as one of the proudest trampolining nations in the world if they could take the all-around title. It would be such a statement from the Portuguese to do it. It was such a risk taking on such a difficult routine, but I'm sure it's going to pay off. Now the Portuguese women. Mariana Cavalho and Catarina Marinito Nunes. These are two experienced gymnasts. Nunes won the bronze medal in the synchronized competition with Dr. Beatriz Martins a couple of years ago. secure and did it extremely well. The Portuguese, who have built up from a network of clubs dotted around the country, a real system, a real legacy that's led them to be one of the greatest trampoline gymnastics nations in the world. They might well take this, Pete. They might win the gold. That was so impressive. Just tiny mistakes have been made, but always fighting to stay in, always fighting for what they need, which is to maintain synchronicity, stay clean, so that's having a high execution score, and you have to keep the routine the same. You cannot obviously adjust your difficulty unless you can find a way of communicating to the other gymnast in that fraction of seconds. Normally in individual trampoline, you can change your routine, or in any other discipline, you can change your routine. But here, that's not possible. They've done brilliantly, the Portuguese. It will be at least silver. <laughs> They're in for a very long and uncomfortable wait now, Portugal, even though it's only two routines. They'll be on tenterhooks. Oh, yes, indeed. 50.51 from the men. The best that we have seen. So that is at least four points for them. And that is at least three points for the women, 46.33. So the Portuguese, as a result of this, are going to win at least the silver medal. It now comes down to what the United States of America can do. They've led all the way through. In the USA, 
We have representing the United States of America now, Isaac Rowley and Cody Gesueli. The first time we've seen the latter in this all-around competition. He's here specifically for the synchronized performance. And here's Gesueli who's in the foreground. They don't look comfortable, and they're not. Now, if you're new to watching trampolining, don't uh, fret for the USA here. That is OK. They're allowed to reset and restart. The worst that they can occur, incur, I should say, is uh, a little penalty for taking too long to embark upon their routine. But, Pete, that's better, isn't it, than going when you're not ready to go? It makes a very little difference, the time penalty. So it's really just about the psychology now. Can they stay calm and put this together? They always keep us guessing, these team finals. Last year, the United States of America were leading going into the final round, and they ended up finishing second on a tie break. Brilliant, coolly done, calmly done. The pressure was there at first, and they just brushed it off. Well done indeed to those two gentlemen from the United States of America, Isaac Rowley and Cody Gesueli. Very strong stuff. Very difficult when you start losing that height. So you, the lower you are, obviously the faster you've got to rotate to fit everything in or the less of a line out you get less time you get to see the exit so started off strong with the trift pipes it's a triple front pipe with a half twist and then there we're now out of synchronization so they're both now fighting to try and match each other in the synchronization But critically, it's 10 skills put down. It all now comes down to the very last performance. Nicole Arsinger and Sarah Webster from the United States of America. It will be them or the Portuguese to win the gold medal. And we are absolutely unsure as to which of them will do it. It's going to be tight. And now the waiting begins to see if it is enough from the United States of America to win this title. But that is absolutely, you have to admire, don't you, Pete, the resolve and calmness of all of these leading pack gymnasts in the final round. You'd never guess that this was the last routine in the final of a team all around because they just put it together at the very, very highest level. It was absolutely superb. That is synchronized trampolining at its best. It was like double vision. Everything they did matched perfectly. They have been brilliant in World Cup competition. If you needed a synchronized pair, exactly as the Americans are acknowledging, if you needed a synchronized pair to bring it home, you'd pick these two. The tight shapes mean there's very little the judges will be looking to take off. We're not looking at time of flight in this um, event because it's synchronized trampolining, but they still maintain a nice height, which makes the skills easy to complete for them. Isaac, don't bend over that. The USA and Portugal 
on the same points score coming into this last round. We're going to find out who gets it. Now, for the men, 48.24. That is quite a way below the score of the Portuguese. They need a win here. They have yeah. won it, 48.89, the United States of America. And that means that for the second year in a row, we have got the teams in first and second place tied on the same number of points. But this time, the USA have actually won the tie break that goes back to the raw score. The total score of all of the routines put together has favoured the USA this time. They have won the gold. And Great Britain are on the podium as well. They have won the bronze medal. The United States of America with the win. The classified results in the team all-around competition at the World Championships. Great Britain winning the bronze medal. The United States of America and Portugal tied on 29. Then we go back to the raw score. And the raw score... The raw score, the big difference there, three marks, can be as simple as finishing your routine. If someone terminates the routine at skill three as opposed to skill four, that can make all the difference. So if a gymnast is making a mistake, it's so important they push through, even if it doesn't go to plan. And that takes such emotional resilience because you feel like you've failed. You feel like it's all gone wrong because you've not done what you planned. But you have to push through, and that's what the USA have just done. Three points or thereabouts, that's all it was for the United States of America to take it over the Portuguese. Well done, though, to the Portuguese. I mean, that was brilliant. When you consider that they were in fourth position at the one-third mark of the whole event. That's why they say you never give up. Yes, absolutely. The great sporting cliché, it's never over till it's over. But, of course, most clichés are born out of truth, aren't they? And uh, we've seen it there. I'm happy for the USA. I think last year it must have been quite difficult um, losing out on the tiebreaker, so it's quite a, quite a turnaround for them. As the dust settles, the USA absorbed the fact that they have won the team all-around title. We'll bring you very soon the medal ceremony for the team all-around competition here in the Arena Birmingham at Birmingham 2023, the Trampoline Gymnastics World Championships.
then stand by and get ready because we're going to display them starting from now. We've got some coming on the big screen now. There we go. First one, wakey, wakey, rise and shine. The more likely you are, the more likely that Josh is going to select it. I mean, it's as simple as that. Josh also reacts well to noisy and movement, so dance away. Try and get through as bed as we can. Give you a chance to get on that big screen. Don't drop the baby too much, please. Just a little bit. Dance. I reckon we're probably going to select any of the people are dancing in. The more you dance, the more we're going to select them. That's the, that's the criteria. Or if you're wearing our official clutch dice, then they will be on those. Don't worry, we've got one hour of this. We'll get for everybody. Come out really long now until we start the award ceremony. But now, though, let's just 
The award ceremony for the team all around the competition at the World Championships of Trampoline Gymnastics. Yet another thrilling and dramatic all around competition for the teams, going right down to the last moments and having to be settled on the tie break criteria. And now we come to the toughest bit of the whole competition, which is just getting them on the podium. Because it truly has been a team effort.
Team Great Britain. The host nation completes their championships by taking the team all around bronze medal. Represented by Bryony Page, Shalise Davidson, Louise Coslin, Andrew Sam, Fred T, Kirsty Way, Zach Pazamalos, Corey Walks, and Izzy Songhurst. And coach Gary Short. In second place, winners of the silver medal, Team Portugal. For Portugal, second place, the silver medalists going one better than they did last year in Sofia. Mariana Cascajera, Tiago Sampaio Romeo, Diego Abru, Vasco Pesso, Diana Gago, Mariana Carvalho, Pedro Ferreira, and Caterina Marina Lunes. And coach Carlos Matias. And in first place, winners of the gold medal and world champions, Team United States of America. They've done it. The world championship title. by Jessica Stevens, Maya Bruns, Bruno Padilla, Alexei Shostak, Hayden Brown, Shelby Nobahara, Isaac Rowley, Cody Gasrelli, Nicole Asinger, Sarah Webster, and Coach Steve Goodstein. What a fantastic final it was, and the United States of America, after last year, thinking that they'd won it, only to find that they'd lost on the tie-break criteria and had to take the silver medals. They've come back a year later, older and wiser, and winning it on the countback system by three points or so over the Portuguese. Well done to all of them. some of these athletes it's yet another team all around medal for others a first time experiencing this and they've done it all as a team a true team effort And we will have now the national anthem of the United States of America. of the United States of America.
the medalists in the team all-around competition at the World Championships of Trampoline Gymnastics in Birmingham, the United Kingdom. A lovely sight this, Pete, at the very end of proceedings, all of the teams coming together for a photograph, if they can all just about fit in, as the photographers have to get uh, back as far as possible to capture them all. Hasn't it been a, a superb World Championships? Unbelievable World oh, yeah, Championships. It's so awesome. nice to see the gymnasts all get along so well. They look after each other, they respect each other, and this just brings it all together. There really is, isn't there, a community in trampoline gymnastics. So you people treat each other with a lot of respect. We do. I couldn't imagine a world without it, to be honest. It's, it's a phenomenal sort of community where we will always look out for each other. We always want other gymnasts to do well. And it's something we hone into the gymnasts early, that we absolutely want everyone to do the best. You do not win because you want someone to fall off. You win because you do better than them. Well, as you said, Pete, you can't imagine a world without it. You don't have to, but uh, that is trampolining for this year. However, next year brings a lot. It brings the Olympic Games, it brings Paris 2024, and it brings us now to the conclusion of our coverage of these FIG Trampoline Gymnastics World Championships. We've seen some never-before-seen moments. We've seen veterans re-establishing themselves at the top of the tree. What will we see next year when the Olympics rolls around? Who knows, but I hope you'll join us to find out. Joining me for these World Championships was Pete Cracknell. I've been Ollie Hogben. It's been a great pleasure having your company, and I'll say farewell until next we meet. Thank you.